so a minute out so hope you guys are ready for that today i'm excited uh it's title tuesday which is always very fun i know we all love some title tuesday so who you got in the chat who you got go runock okay mvl busy we got jospin playing we got a lot of players here a lot of big boys today uh who's this artemiev we got Faruja. oh man Faruja came to play today Faruja came to play jospin um, we saw that he said he was literally playing an, an intense match with uh, with um, Naroditsky. What time was that? That was like 4 a.m. It's like <laughs> it's not even a full like eight to ten hours later. Right. You know, he's back in like some big boy chess like this is what he does. It's so funny. All right, guys, we got about 20 seconds here. Eleven rounds. Eleven rounds. I'm here for Faruja, he says. I'm here for Ferrugia. Well, he's ready. All right, so here we go. 12 seconds left. Let's get it, guys. I have 2,900 ELO. Okay, hey, look, that's real nice right there. That's real nice, big fella. Okay. You here for Naka? Hikaru is not actually playing. Hikaru is not playing. But, all right, here we go. Game time. Games are live. Games are live. Now, let's check out the top dog. Jaspum in here holding it down stronger than everyone based off the rating based off the rating here Of course, but let's see what he does. We have a Sicilian ah c3 Sicilian, but he does he does it in a delayed way I don't play we don't like delayed. We want to c3 Cecil for the kill. That's what we do it You can search it on YouTube. That is correct But we knight f3 though that that delayed part. It's it's fine. I mean a delayed is is, is understandable the, This this position could have happened anyway from a regular c3 Sicilian but after, uh, yeah, this is correct. Knight to b3, you want to take over this isolated pawn. That's usually what happens. Usually what happens. Sicilian for the kill. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Speedy Indian. Okay, what's up, Speedy? How are you, man? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, Speedy Indian. Uh, where's the email for that? There you go. Yeah, yeah, we had to put that in the chat. So here, with this, with that being said, guys, we have to make sure that we take over the isolated pawn. This is this in this particular variation. This isolated pawn you actually go against, and he's doing that already. And what you want to do is just put pieces in the center as he's doing here. We're going to trade a heavy as we've already done, traded one of the rooks, put a rook to d1 here, and just kind of annoy him. So g3, that was actually a great move here because now you have to play a thing knight f3. Yeah, you just don't want the queen coming in there and going crazy on you. So you had to do something there. Well, that's not a move. Rook to d1, though, is definitely coming. That's a nice move, trading, trying to trade off this knight. But also, trades help us to, due to the isolated pawn strategy-wise. Now, tactically, you're supposed to play tactically. Black's doing exactly what he's supposed to. They're, both sides are literally doing exactly what they're supposed to when it comes to um, this right here. So be very, very uh, careful. Hi chat, what's going on? Man, with dead memes are broken dreams. Welcome to the stream. So what he what did he do? He traded and played f4. Nice move. Yeah, he had to figure out what to do here, and now he uses the other knight to occupy the square in front of the pawn. They always say the most important square is the for is the square in front, you know, of the pawn. Or the most important square for the pawn is the square in front of it. So this one we have uh we've occupied it. We have a knight here, pawn, and the bishop and the rook here. Queen e2. I mean, we're still in this pen. That's a risky move. It just feels scary to make that one. You're still here. You're like, you didn't go mid pretty. Mid. You didn't go that far, right? Queen F2 is probably. Maybe he's trying to avoid knight E4. But Queen E2 is definitely not the move we're looking for. F4 is scared. F4, I'm scared for the king. Yeah, you. And that's a, a great observation. There are some holes around the king here, but we actually replace it with the bishop and the queen here as we defend this square. It's really hard to get there. And of course, h4, he's trying to maybe play knight h5 and knight g3 in some cases. And the king can actually sit on h1. But you are correct though. Black's king is a little bit safer than white's king. Yeah, it's already there. What's up? Tundra Mike, man. How are you, man? Welcome to the stream. H4 is on the board, so you got to be careful here as, honestly, both parties. Of course, we do want to play against this isolated pawn. We would like to make trades, so literally something like Bishop F5. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Maybe Bishop B5, to be honest, because trades do favor white due to the isolated pawn here. And this one being a weak pawn as well. So if we go into an end game, white's completely winning this. There's two weaknesses here, and they always say the principle of two weaknesses which is, of course, uh, when you attack one weakness and all the army and everything that he has comes defends this weakness, then we have the other one that sometimes it's very hard to switch to um, um, from defense from one to the other uh, attacking piece or whatever. You know, it's there already. Nice. Yeah, what's up, Sub-Zero? Welcome to the stream. You talk Queen F3, huh? 
Chess.com hype. That's right. Sub Zero, good to see you. The in game support's white, but I just fear the Open King, to be honest. Yes. Yep. And it, usually, if you fear things like this, which is totally normal, what you have to do is actually uh, calculate. We all like to say calculation is king. So if it feels scary, you know, looks are very deceiving in chess, but what is it really doing? Like, if you calculate it for real, what's really going on, right? What's really going on? Bishop b5 is nice. You like that? Yeah, I was liking bishop b5 too. But rook f1, we had to defend this pawn, and we did get knight h5 for knight to g3. But we can play rook f2, and, and oddly enough, we can hide the, hide the king on h2. Odd move, but it can't happen. What happened? a6? Okay, stopping. Well, that's never happening anyway. F, ooh, yikes. <laughs> don't, don't block with your face. F5. You know, you look away, oh, F5, and then GG, start a new one. You would, you would love to play F5 in this position. Thank you for the tip, sir. I'll do more in-game calculation. Calculation is king. I just started chess not too long ago, and I'm 19. Okay, that's what's up. Keep using chess.com, the learning tab. Just click on the learn tab. Go through everything. You know, go through everything. Really, the lessons will help you a lot, though. Lessons, tactics. You know, congratulations. F five would have I would be trapped easily. Yeah, F five. F five seems great, but you know that that's not going to be too fun here. We have to give big credit here to this Fide master here from the Netherlands. Very strong. He's playing some great chess here against the strongest, according to the uh, rating. Jospom is uh, the strongest player in the tournament now. Right now, champ uh, two thousand five, which is Renok, has won. So we're waiting for mini games to be finished here. This is actually surprisingly one of the last games. One of the last games here uh, of round one. Yeah, round one. Lots of players still playing, though. Okay, so knight h5. Like, you can't get f5 to work. I mean, big shout out to him, man. Playing some strong chess here. He played this really good. He played this really good here. Uh, he doesn't want to take a draw. He's not going to take a draw here. Can't play f5. Yeah, remember that bishop b5 move was probably much better early on. Knight to g3 here. Like, what do you actually do? Knight e2, go back. Bishop e3. I wonder if you could, like, weirdly enough, like, move the rook, move the king, and then move the king again. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, he played f5. Oh, it's about to get live. He played f5. It's about to get live. Now, that, that could have been a nice way. Oh, he jumped off the deep end. They, they did not like that one at all. Pawn takes. It's probably this move. And then if knight takes f2, you have knight f5, and we live start a new game. This is a family channel. GG, start a new one. 20 seconds, though. He takes it. He saw that. He saw that. Check. Flex real hard. King goes to h8. Only move. Only move here. Oh, that's a wrap. Yeah, GG, start a new one. That was great. Wow. Wow. He played great. He played some great chess there. Yeah, he played great in the end. Is he Carl playing? He's not. Uh, have you ever played Tyler Tuesday? Um, by the way, where's Danny? Danny's holding it down. Chess.com team. Go, Danny. What's up, Danny? Um, have you ever played? Yeah. No, I, I've never won Title Tuesday. My best score was uh, six and a half. Six and a half out of 11. With, of course, the top dogs here with the big boys. So that's my biggest one, man. Yeah, I haven't played in a while, though. Family show. Come on, Speedy Indian. Come on. Jospin wins that one. Great job, Jospin. Now we're going to move on to any... Let's see what games are left. Ooh, Jeffrey Zhang. Like, you get... I'm so hyped. Every Tuesday, this is, like, the best day. Because, like, you get Jeffrey Zhang. You get Jospin. You get Farouja's in here. Artemiev. Just... Oh, I forgot Eric Hansen was playing. Oh, I forgot this player's in there. Like... You know, it's just so many celebrities that you can sit here and watch play for 11 rounds, guys. That's like free lessons. Literally every Tuesday. You shouldn't be anywhere else every Tuesday. So here, uh, Jeffrey is trying to push for a win, but I don't think he's going to be able to do so. Yeah, especially after losing that one. This is definitely going to be a draw. Um, I think Black has some swindling type of... Oh my goodness, he did it! As, as we say it, he does it. He does it. I was like, Black got some swindles in here, you know, and then somehow he just mangled himself there. Like, wow. Oh, my goodness. It was supposed to be a draw. That was great. That was great entertainment right there. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It was just over. It was just over. Wow. Yeah, I think 
well, how did you? How was you supposed to draw this? I thought it was just night back, but maybe not. Yeah, and then probably just like move. You have to go maybe forward and backward. It's a little finesse to it. It was a finesse to it, and he got he got caught. Him. Oh my goodness! Wow, he got some swindles. Yeah, he got some swindles, and look at that. Yeah, he got some swindles. Bam, and he hit him in the face. Oh my goodness! Right, that was like crazy, Jasmine. So we got a lot of ones here, though. A lot of ones. Let's see what's left. Let's see what's left. Um, okay, cool. That game's over. Who won that one? Grandmaster GG. About a five or six games left. This should be a draw. There it is. There it is. Easy, easy draw there. Okay, Black's totally winning this game. Um, and but two seconds on the clock actually. Whoa. All you gotta do is move. You gotta move. That's it. Oh uh, man. But no, Black won that one actually. So three minutes, one second increment. So and he's losing. Yeah, whatever. He's like, oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. This one should be a draw, but it's not. Well, how do you blunder? The only move that loses is that one. Raise your hand. I'm gonna raise mine too. Raise your hand if that's you. You make the only move that loses. Of, of course, we've all done that. <laughs> the only, you just happen to find the only one that loses the game on the spot. It sucks. We all go through it. It's okay. It's okay. I know. I know. We're gonna give you guys a hug. Hugs in the chat. Hugs everywhere. I've done that mistake before in my games. It makes me feel better that GM also makes it. I like to point that out. I do like to point that out a lot. If you if we see some mistakes or some blunders, we like to point that out that these guys are still half human. The other half is from a different planet with that chess game, right? But um, they are still human, right? Are you a fan of Jobava's work? Jobava's nasty. Hey, look, Jobava... Hey, if you want to try something new these days, I would definitely take up the Joe Baba London. Now, I'm E4 for life, but, you know, Jay, uh, that Joe Baba, I was like, man, that's nice. Yo, Joe Baba has a very, it's an unorthodox, but strong style, actually. Kind of revitalizing old stuff that people just didn't think was correct, but it is, if you know how to play it. You're from a different planet? Okay. All right, bro. You can't finesse the finesse. <laughs> Oh, man, you guys are great. All right, so what happened here? Why is there a queen on F3 already? What's this weird stuff happening? What's from the beginning? Okay, let's try it. Here we go. So a London, but with queen F3. I've never seen this before in my life. Never seen this type of London. It avoid it like, you know, breaks the rule out of the opening. But hey, he's like, you know, we're going to try it here. I, honest, I, don't, I honestly kind of like it. Right, because of H4, H5. Like, I kind of like this. If queen e7, you, you probably have to go this route, to be to be honest. Because, like, all the pieces are over here. Why in the world would you castle to this side of the board? So, you probably might see castle queen side. Because there's a lot of weaknesses around the queen. There it is. The king. Queen e7, probably going queen side. Probably going king side. Or queen side, I mean. Bonjour, yes. Hola, what's up, Elfie? Or LFA, sorry. LFA. Paul, that's like super GM boss. Yeah, what's up, chat? You guys are live. Castle queen side. I'll probably just do the same. Yeah, like you cannot castle to this side of the board. So that's just a rule for you guys too. You pushing all these pawns like this? Why would you castle here? It's not safe. It would be safer to keep your king in the center of the board than you know castling into this kind of stuff. So Bishop went to G seven here. Uh, I do like black's position. I think it's fairly equal, honestly, especially after this weird queen. Now the queen is placed extremely weird. Like, why is the queen on h2 now, right? So that's a highlighting fact that black can take advantage of is the fact that, like, your queen is on h2. Extremely weird. It is out of the way, though. You can't centralize your rooks quite easily without, without trying to figure out what to do with the queen. But the queen is definitely in an ugly square. I like this move because he, he was definitely facing e5 and getting shut down. Bishop and queen would have been stuck here for a while. So he plays d5 to break that up immediately, running right into an x-ray or a discovery here. But sometimes, as we said early on today, that of course it may look scary. Looks are very deceiving in chess. But calculation is king. So if you can calculate and realize, am I losing anything? I, I should be okay. Does he have any strange knight moves? I should be okay, even though this is here. Queen takes, my queen gets out, and he plays knight here. But everything's defended, so I just go back home. But rook d2 is a clever move because you're still 
You can you can double up. Rook D2 would be a little bit better than Rook D1. Plans for E5? Yes, that's absolutely correct. 19 game gamer. The 19 gamer. So he's thinking a little long here. There's really not much else to do. He plays Rook to D1, which is probably not the best. Rook, and now you have to deal with this, right? If the Rook was on D2, at least you could think about sacrificing the pawn because it wouldn't be a fork. Now you're going to lose to a fork here. So you have to play like Rook F1. And this Rook, yeah, the Rook was much better on D2. How are you, James? I am good, Pikasan. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Hope everything is well. Hope everyone is well today. Title Tuesday, there is Rook F1. Defending. Jospin's up so much time here. He's up uh, about a full minute. About. About. You know, now it's getting less as the time click uh, goes on, obviously. But, of course, this is a, a, a noticeable time advantage. 11 seconds before he's under a minute here. And this is not an easy position to navigate. H5, I like this. That was a strong move. He had that in mind for real. That was good. That was very good because this was honestly not something you actually even looking at at all. Like this is the last move he was probably looking at, to be honest, because there's so much else you could probably do. But I did like this due to the fact that it hits um, this pawn. If pawn takes, we had queen takes f5 and we have double pawns here. We can eventually put a rook here and bully those. So that would have been pretty nice here. He plays queen here. The obvious, of course, is mate, but that's not mate defending the knights defending. So if he would have captured, I think he was going to play b5. And then he plays g5. Man, Jocelyn's so strong. That was so accurate. Queen f6 was hitting b2. If you would have took it on g6, then we'd play b5, and the knight has to move, and then we mate you. So once you take care of this, which he did, then you hit that man with g5, and we live. It was very beautiful. Very beautiful. Queen g3 out of the way. And d5 even would have worked, too. Yeah, d5 would have worked, too. I went b5 because I keep the bishop diagonal open, but uh, d5 would have worked just as well. Knight a3 out the way. Oh, you can't go here. That's not a move at all. You would like to, but you just can't go there. That's a nice move. What does Jospin do? Man, Jospin playing. These guys are strong today. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's title Tuesday. But like, you would expect Jospin to be just like crushing every game. And he's really not. He's really not at all. So like, you know, this is, I mean, he's winning. He's definitely winning and like playing accurate here. But like this is, uh, these boys playing good chess today. Like, man. Every single every single Tuesday though, every Tuesday it's like that. What's up, Serial? Show Ali Reza or other games? Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get to him. We'll get to him. Fruz is actually in first place right now with two out of two, so we should be looking at his next because now he's at the top. Let's check the standings. Right, Fruz is now at the top, so we usually take the, show the top games. Most people might just be watching. Yeah, most people are watching, guys. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Ferruja with two out of two. There's a lot of twos here. Usually we say this every single week. We say this literally every single week. You can lose about three games total. If you lose more than three games, you're out of everything. Now you're just kind of playing here. What happened? Whoa, whoa. Evaluation went crazy. Oh my goodness, it's going nuts. It's going nuts right now. Oh, you dropping a piece? Is that a wrap? Queen H3. Oh, that's a wrap. Yeah, that's over. That's why. There's no way out of that. Black one, yeah. There was no way out of that. Queen h3, you have this check here that's decisive no matter what. So, like, and your queen's hit at the same time. Very accurate, as we always know he does. That's how he plays. Uh, Naraditsky said that this morning, too. was like, bro, he's just finding everything. And he was. Like, Jospin, if you watched Naraditsky this morning, if you watched Naraditsky this morning, this was, uh, he was playing Jospin, and it was going back and forth, and it was just wild. And uh, he kept saying it. Like, Jospin just finding everything. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, hey, it's right here. Yeah. That man is getting stronger. King d7. C5? Maybe push it anyway. Maybe not. Can I just walk the king over? What's the problem with this move? King d3. King d7. King c3. This is Artemiev, by the way. Blunder. Yay, Blunder. What's up, Davey? Welcome to the stream. Yeah. King d3. He, he took. Oh, it just says I'm winning the end game. Whoa, he, that's why he took so long to calculate that just now. He was trying to say that um, I'm winning the end game. So c5, I'm going to move the king around, and this should be game over, honestly. Yeah, king d3, king c3, yeah. That was sweet. Like, I'm winning the end game, bro. And look at this. This is classic end game. He can never touch this pawn. This pawn is taboo here. As you take, you can't catch me. Try to catch me. And you can't there. That was beautiful calculation at the end. Beautiful calculation. That's what it takes to uh, to be... You know, strong in these type of end games and things like that. Brandon Jacobson, very strong as well. Oh, he's down though. He's not a piece. 
he got some comp a little bit. I mean, literally just slight like, compensation. Um, just because if he wins this pawn, it may be harder for white, for white to do stuff. Ultimate troll, yeah, flex. Yeah, this is a this is a, a hard game, honestly, for for white to to close out. Okay, maybe not. Hold up, snap. That's even better. That's even better. Now we're getting everything we want here. But there's a one second on the clock. Is he going to flag? Hopefully not here. You do have the one second increment, so flagging is much harder to do. Running out of time. If you aren't, if you don't know what that is, but it's one second increment. Yes. So flagging, which is running out of time, is not uh, as common. It's not as common, but it's still very hard. Like that one second increment seemed like a lot of time, but it's really not. It's not. When you got two seconds and you get one second increment, now you only got two seconds. Then you get, you know, three. Like <laughs> you're still running out of time. Yeah. So he's making his work though. He's making his work. King B5. Very nice. And it kind of sucks. Like it's bittersweet. Like if you're running out of time, if you're running out of time, then you want the increment. And especially if you're winning in a position. But if you're getting crushed and you're losing here, like in this position here, um, then you you don't want to have the increment at all. And look at that beautiful mate there, of course. Now, if this was shifted over one square, one square, this would be a, a absolute book draw. The king just gets to the corner, and you can't get me out of the corner. So very nice, instructive moment. This is already an in-game. And if we go back, I'm sure he probably noticed that all the way back here. This is why he chose to trade. Instead of, like, you have other ways to do this. But he was like, you know what? Hey, I'm queening right here on the light square. Easy. So I'm just going to trade everything off. An easy end game all the way through all the way through technique 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 checkmate beautiful very very beautiful great job understanding of the pieces that you have and the plans and strategical ideas attached to them rook h8 this looks like a draw and it is the evaluation bar says it's supposed to be a draw but let's see what happens okay cool 50 move rule all right nothing crazy nothing crazy no swindles no swindles but we, <laughs> we haven't seen enough just yet Every week we have some beautiful, crazy swindles to happen. Another 50 move rule. Yeah, how's this one looking? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, ending right on time. Right on time here. This is round two. Oh, yeah. He, the king is placed nicely. If this king was anywhere back here, this would be a draw. And he does resign. He does resign because the king is too close and you're just going to have to advance. This is one. This one's over there. And that's the end of round two. Let's take a look at the standings here. Jasper. First place. Well, a lot of people with two. A lot of people with two. Eric Hansen, E. Hansen in the building, too. Whoa. We in here, James Canty. What's up? Game until bed. Very instructive. Thanks, man. What's the 50 move rule? That's a great question. That means that if for 50 moves, imagine this, right? Imagine this. You get to, like, move, you know, 30. 30 and, like, or, like, 40, whatever. You guys are in an in-game, to say the least. You're in an in-game, and you don't. The 50 move rule is a draw no matter what. Like, you move 50 moves without a pawn move. So if you make 50 moves without a pawn move um, after a certain position, then you have um, a draw. So it's kind of like no pieces. Oh, yeah, yeah, no pieces capture, right? No pieces capture. But no, 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 it's just it's literally a pawn move because pieces captures are different. Pieces captures can happen. No pawn moves is the 50 move. I never saw that before in pawn yet. Yeah, captures, uh, I think it is. Wait, is pawn, pawns, checks, and captures? All that stuff, right? Jospam, yeah, let's check Ali Reza. You guys want to see Ali Reza? Let's see him. He's playing black right now. Let's see what happened from the beginning. We had a, uh, whoa, E6 and G6. Usually, you got to be careful here playing both of these, but of course, it's Ali Reza. So he will be careful playing E6 and G6. Then he plays D6 as well. Knight C6 here. So more of a counter attacking position, my type of things here. This is a King's Indian type position now at this point. <laughs> Not a man. What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. No pawn moves, no captures. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. That's right. A5. A5. So A5 is on the board. And uh, I like I like Ali Reza's position, but I also like white as well. I'm a fan of a bishop on G7. You know, I'm a fan of the modern defense, the King's Indian defense, accelerated dragon. If there's a bishop on G7, I'm hype about it. So, you know, but these positions are very nice. Look at this weird and strange move here. You, you can always bank on Ali Reza to find some type of strange move or strange plan that like you have never seen. Because right here, that's exactly what's going on here. I mean, he's just he's gonna place the queen over here on on this. I would love to have the queen here. It's just a different different style, different thinking. This queen feels very weird over here. But Ali Reza is going to show us his intention with this queen all the way over here 
on the a7 square looks are very deceiving right so you know and you are playing ali reza there's some psychological pressure there like yo i'm playing the kid i'm playing that guy i'm playing that kid that plays like a grown man okay <laughs> you need to be careful so this may have some true merit to it or it could be just gibberish it could be just whatever he just like let's just do this and like see what he does right you know it could be either or psychologically he's in his head he could definitely be in his head there or this could be theory this could be prep we don't really know you don't really know no night maneuver yet 2700 in them yeah man i mean it happens it literally happens bro there's many many like uh many many strong ones but it, it's rare that is so that is rare harry correct that is rare yeah my goal is 2800 this year blitz let's get it let's get it hopefully let's put some chess goals in the chat what is your chess goal this year if you didn't make one it's not too late to make a chess goal this year we were saying yo thanks snorty okay okay snorty thank you appreciate it rick a to e8 though uh putting the pressure here yeah he's ali reza is going to work he's doing his thing but the evaluation bar is going crazy saying like this is this is not a move this is not gonna work gm okay all right wizard harry 2000chess.com let's go lee tom hitting 1700 let's go to win 50 games you can do that break a thousand you can do it just go become gm okay all right benny watts let's get it trying to get 1000 1650 break 1500 1200 1600 all right cool now i'm gonna tell you one thing all these numbers in the chat i'm gonna tell you one thing the person that does the most tactics is gonna get the highest amount of rating 90 percent of that is correct but whoever is gonna do the most puzzles is going to have the biggest rating increase so whoever that is ready set go you know i'll see you at the finish line learn more than two openings okay cool cool black can play rookie too so why is this like oh rook d2 mm. yeah i told you like ali reza played this you know it was very strange it was very strange but that doesn't mean it's correct just because i am ali reza you know and like you know doesn't mean you could just get away we're playing some strange stuff like this this is very strange but uh rook to d2 was a much better move as you see the evaluation bar goes back to equal because in even my system for all you guys that got that book out there my system is a very strong book very complicated they use a lot of big words that you got to google to be honest but uh, at the same time here um it does talk about the seventh rank the second and the seventh rank is something that you should not be giving up and if you do you should be it's in, you're in trouble sometimes you can be down two three pawns sometimes even a piece but because you own the seventh rank or the second rank that uh, you have more than enough compensation for whatever that may be here actually we we feel a little bit better luckily the queen cannot come in here now imagine you know if the queen was somewhere else this just strange maneuver here it wasted time as well i mean it took two two moves to get there when we could have probably made some better moves and that move is a blunder it loses on the spot eventually what's the move though what's the move what's the move like i don't know i don't know he missed it too so let's uh let's get a little bit of help here is queen e7 what yo stop playing stop playing let's just get that off the screen that don't even make no sense queen e7 queen e7 minus four bro what stop playing like what are you talking the engine sometimes you have to treat the engine like that sometimes you have to wow that was beautiful though hold up is he in trouble is this game over he got made it oh my goodness so that's why it was the same thing that's why he played queen e8 wow look at that queen e8 is different though you see the difference queen e8 makes the evaluation go different differently but queen e7 was i guess better wow he found it though yeah he found the same idea he played queen e7 was like minus four queen e8 was like not the move not the move do you have a book out no i don't ton uh tons of tons ton to mike i am actually working on that i have a course out though for the c3 cecilia we call it the c3 cecile for the kill yeah i got a course okay so let's go to uh let's see the standings let's update that the standings updated round three Ferruja doing his thing now of course a lot of other players are too it's a lot of threes here you see all these threes a lot of threes a lot of threes so that's cool that's cool right but it's still a lot of chess left even people that lost three games it can still flip it right and win the next eight in a row which could put them closer to the top you know so let's see what happens uh let's check the la uh, some more games here jospam still fighting here jospam's completely winning uh he's winning material immediately yeah that's a res resignation he should resign right there 
He should resign right there. Your opinion on your on the French? What's up, Tebow to Baker? Yeah, the French honestly is very solid. I use it to get up to eighteen hundred over the board. Honestly, then I switch to e five, and then over twenty two hundred c five. So um, and now over twenty three hundred. I'm I'm really like trying to do. I'm looking at the modern a little bit flexibility. You know, it's it's all about being flexible these days. So uh, where can you access the course? Uh, you can send me a message, or you can join the Discord too. Yeah, but send me a message on chess.com. I'll get it to you actually. I'll get it to you. Is he from Peru? That's a good question, Publius. I feel like I can finesse here as white. I feel like I'm close to finessing. Oh, but I'm not. I'm getting finessed. Oh, my goodness. Try to catch me if you can, big fella. Catch me if you can, man. That's not a move. Wow. Wow. Got that, man. That is funny. <laughs> All right, time to my ear. Yeah, just send me a message, bro. Send me a message. Yeah. Appreciate it. That's hilarious. Okay, let's see what's left. Black's completely winning, huh? Hmm. Well, well, how? Oh, these pawns are connected. Seems like, yeah, they, they too close. Yeah, they too close. We're just going to walk the dogs in the park and have a nice day. Pretty easy. Just going to walk the dogs. we just walking the dogs, right? Easy. 96? Okay, he's going for the check here. He wants to... It's because they're both in time trouble. Things happen when time gets low. Things happen when time gets low. So let's see what happens. Check. Okay, I'm out the way. There is no forks here. That's pretty nice. We're looking to do, you know, a decisive shot, like work takes followed by a, a forking move, but not available. This works as well. And look at these pawns here. Remind you of the uh, Duboff game. <laughs> Duboff Duda. Oh, man. That, the, oof, that's a wrap there. Two pawns will always win in that situation, and queen takes is going to be a wrap as well. So good game. Good game there. We have a few games left in this one. We just want to get some more rings. Nice job, Snorty the Pig. Great job. Check up. Check up again. He probably gonna repeat. Okay, maybe not. He says I'm not repeating. I'm not repeating. I'm gonna get the king a little bit closer. Try to swindle you, and he does. He hits the man with the swindle. Hit him. Flex real hard. Flex real hard. Hit him. Get out the way. Get the going. Yep. This is a this is a classic. Like this is like a basic. Oh, that's made anyway. But this was very classic. Like this part right here. You honestly, this is not as easy as it looks. You actually have to get the king around here, and then you have to keep the king around the rooks, and you're going to be like rook lifting and doing whatever you can around the rook, around the rook, because this rook is very active, and you're getting checked like all the time. Sometimes in time trouble, it's it's extremely annoying to face that. So then you're like, it's almost like you can't win. Like, how do I win, right? Very easy technique here, technique, technique, all the way through. Yeah, with one second increment, this is an, an easy one. This is an easy one. And round four is about to start, guys. Round four is about to start. Let's check the standings. Look at the big boys play here. We got Peter Svidler in here. Oh, my goodness. Svidler, Faruja, Fedeseev, Eric Hansen, Jospom. Bro, I'm getting hype. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm getting hot. My body heat is rising. Like, this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is the greatest chest you love to see at these times here. Okay, so we're waiting for, there it is. Let's check, let's check Jospom's game. Peter Svidler, I know, right? Peter Svidler's playing. Like, I mean, we saw Jocelyn already. Let's go check out Peter Svidler, bro. Like, you got Peter Svidler playing in this thing. Okay, pawn takes. Oh, this is a uh, Rossellino? Yeah, Rossellino Sicilian. Get him, Canty. What's up, eggs and bacon? Let's go. Yeah, we have, um, this is a Rossellino Sicilian played how many times? Don't know. Don't, you can fact check that, but it's like five or six times, maybe. In the uh, 2018 World Championship with Magnus and Fabi, this was played a lot. Like the Rossellino Sicilian, it's annoying to face, honestly. I was playing a Dirty Harry Sicilian, which is fun. That's a fun Sicilian, bro. Just Google it. Like, that's that's a fire Sicilian. It's fun. But uh, honestly, practical chances are extremely hard for Black, um, even in, in good position. It's like an accelerated Sveshnikov, which is another one. It's really nice. Sveshnikov's more sound and solid. Very tactical. Very tactical. That was also played a favorite of Magnus, so... You know, it's popular opening now, so it's harder to study. People are more prepared. F6 moves, very weird. It's for knight F7 and castling. B4, though, I think this is a strange-looking 
Well, not really. This is the same move. You're playing all the same moves. And the Rossellimo, um, just I know from the black side, I've faced many Rossellimos. It'll be h3, a3, b4. The bishop goes to e3. And like you just, you have a closed position. And why do you have it closed? Well, you always have to play to the minor pieces you have. So what minor pieces do I have? I have two knights and a bishop versus two bishops. Two bishops are very strong. As you see, the f5 move opens up the bishop. I'm loving black's position at this point because the bishops are about to open up. So you want to try to keep it closed as long as possible because I'm the one with the two knights versus the two bishops. As the position opens up, these bishops are going to become monsters and slicing everything like knives through butter or saber through anything. Because I am a Jedi. I am a Jedi. And Carl was playing a tournament, lost yesterday, so he's out taking a day off. Yeah, so yeah, you relax, right? You need to rest. You need to rest. You need to rest. You know, it's just like any sport. I mean, yeah, you're using... It's not physical, but you are your brain, like your brain. You're using your brain in high amounts of like work. There. Like you really you're stressing your brain in, in a way like you're working. So because you're working, you do need to take rest. It is vital to be able to rest. What's up, chess master? What's going on, man? Uh, I like E5 for some reason. This just jumps out immediately. Doesn't mean it is correct, but it does feel like I gained a little bit of space. Anytime you can get a pawn in your enemy's territory here, 8 to 5, anything like this. And for white, it would be 1 to 4. There it is. He plays e5 too. We watching Peter play. Let's go, Peter. Let's go, Peter. Yeah, but 1 through 4, though, um, you, you want to you make sure you remove anything that is not your piece out of here. That's, that's usually the rule there. Let's take a look at the updated standing, though. Yeah, nobody won yet. It's still 3 out of 3. Still 3 out of 3 here. Okay, last few moves. Queen to b1. I'm not a big fan. But I guess he's just saying I'm going to bully this pawn. I'm going to bully this side of the board. Because uh, rook b8, I think, was... Was it hanging a pawn? Not really. But you couldn't... It was pinned, though. That's kind of weird. Queen b1. These weird queen moves today. Like, queen... Like, for who's it? Queen b8. Queen a7. There's a queen on b1. Like, this is weird today. Very weird. Very, very weird here. Queen b3. Queen b1. Very, very weird. Oh, here we go. He's going for it. Why can't I? Why is this losing? Oh, yeah, he blundered. Oh, my goodness, he blundered. I think he thought he had queen c1, but he doesn't. f4. He has f4 after queen c1. Yikes. Ma, wow, bro. Wow. Chess is not an eSport. Funny. Yeah, I think he thought. He just blundered. He literally just straight up blundered a piece here. It does happen, though, right? It happens. So now, hey, pat yourself on the back, you know. Clap your hands, you know, feel good about life because they do it too. They just don't do it as often as as, as other players, right? You know, but they blunder too. That was a straight up blunder. He just thought that it was there and it wasn't. And F4 was just a move right after. That was it. That was it. There was nothing he could do about it. So he's just down. Evaluation bar says exactly what's on the board. He's down a piece. And actually, it's closer to minus four, meaning a piece and a pawn. But that made it equal immediately. Let's try to figure out why. Like, how is that already equal? Oh, he could play knight g5. He missed it. I think knight g5, king g7, you check up, flex real hard. Now he saw it. He saw it now. And you can flex real hard right here with the check. And then play knight e4. You might be okay. It might be okay. Rook f6, knight e4. Oh, knight f7, even better. Even better. Yeah, even better here. So we're back in the game. We're back in the game. Engine doesn't think so. But I think we're back in the game a little bit. Just a little bit. If I'm playing from Peter. From Peter's standpoint, dropping a piece, just straight up dropping a piece to being in this position. Okay. I feel a little bit better. I feel just a little bit better now. Knight takes h6 with the intention of knight g4 now. I can just snap that. And then knight g4. And we score. Like, that's easy. What are we doing? Rook takes, bishop takes, knight g4. You got to take the material. You, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. He just takes it. He just take it. And then pawn takes and you try to play g5. For some reason, we thought this was just over. But bishop takes, pawn takes, and g5. Take with the pawn. You know, you could take with the rook, but that's I don't think that's correct. I mean, rook takes, yeah, okay. It is a move. This is now like just crushing for black, right? We got a pass pawn over here. Pass pawns must be pushed. We cannot afford to trade queens, he says. That is 100% correct. King h2, maybe take on f2. That's a pawn there. Uh, we get a pawn right back. Black is pressing, but we got this cover pretty nicely. If you think about a defense standpoint, we're doing great. If queen takes, we would have taken on b4. So he goes back to d4. 
queen in, into uh, c7 to hit e7. And now, can we trade now? We might be okay trading now. Yeah, he goes for it. That's right. He's okay now. All rookie games are drawn, but not really. Not really. I, th I like, I think Rick takes h6 was moving instead. You might be right about that. And then knight f7, that might be a little bit sharper. You might have been right about that. Every time you have um, combinations like that, you do want to switch them around, right? You want to reverse the move order is what they call it. If you have got, if you have one combo, try to do it the other way, right? See, start with the second move first and see if that works any better than you doing the first move first. It's a very, very great concept. You can gain a hundred point, hundreds of points overnight. Okay, maybe not hundreds, but you can gain some hefty amount overnight usually if you get that concept down. Very nice here from Peter. He made it a draw. I mean, he and he knows how to draw this with his eyes closed. Very nice. Very, very nice here. Uh, I think he had a better position early on, though, but good game. Good game. Let's check out Ferruja playing on a shuck. Hmm. Is this a draw? It should be a draw. It should be. It should be a draw. Clap, clap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bravo. Bravo. The golf claps. That's usually, well, they don't really do golf claps. Like, back in the chess days when the games was over, they was just, like, clapping, clapping. But, like, the little golf claps. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Knight takes h4. Uh, does that work? I don't know about that, dog. I don't know about that. Yeah, Farouz just smelt the blood in the water there. You just take it. Well, wait a second. Hold on. He can chase his king back. Yeah, he had to be careful about that. Very smart. Very smart. Oh, no. This... Ferruja losing. Oh, I thought he was getting crushed. Wow, he drew this. He drew this. Somehow this is a draw. Somehow it's a draw now. He messed it up. Now he finds it. He finds a draw. He escapes the Houdini man today, right? He escaping with the draw. He's done that before, you know, Anish Giri, right? He's done that before. Escaped with a draw. Wow. Man, he escaped with a draw there. Yeah, because the knight has to stay here or else... I mean, we're so close to queening, like, you had to do this in a way. So, he was forced to take that. He was forced to do that. A few more games here. Oh, Greg Shahadi's playing. What's up, Greg? Shout out to Greg Shahadi. Another literally the almost the same in-game. Almost the same in-game. Very nice. This is a draw here. Greg found a way to just make this a draw. Literally, all you have to do is shuffle back and forth. You can you can honestly even, well, maybe not. Don't, don't put the king in the corner, too. Too quickly, because if you do that, there's like funny mates and self mates that might happen. You know, those weird mates were like the only way to get mated is like this position. And that could happen here if you put your king in the corner. So well, cool. We took a draw there, he says. We'll take a quick draw. No problem. Maybe not a quick draw, but it was a draw. We have Ranak Sadwani, very strong uh, Indian grandmaster here playing with the black pieces. He does have that extra piece. And usually this would be a draw already with the rook and the bishop it's supposed to be a draw is what we'll say it's supposed to be because it is it's supposed to be a draw with the rook and the bishop but there's a lot many many cases where the rook and the bishop actually win now with that being said you know what's so funny i thought the pawn I th I, he stepped there and i was like whoa he just stepped in the check did anyone else think that like i literally thought he just stepped right in the check oh my goodness look at the blunder you only get this in these kind of positions look at how strange that is Rook check. Like <laughs> this is so strange. Very strange. The only move you have is to block with the rook. When does this ever happen? When does this ever happen, right? This is like a very strange position. Very strange. But you get a lot of strange positions in these rook and bishop versus rook in games anyway. But that was that was definitely strange. If this pawn's gone, he's not fine. He still has to work it out because the rook and the bishop, they are gonna try to mate you with that rook and bishop. There's been many, many cases that it has happened. So, you know, it's going to go down like that. This is the last game. Last game. This is completely winning for black. And now with one pawn, it's a completely different story. As we can use what they call the Philidor position, taking the third rank. And as soon as one one pawn pushes, or the pawn he's trying to queen, we go to the back rank with a barrage of checks that are unavoidable. So now, with this being said, there's this extra pawn that he's trying to convert, which it should be it's quite easy to convert here. Bring the king into the shelter square, and then bring the king even a little bit further. There it is. Yep, there it is. GG. Oh, hold up, big fella. Oh, hitting with the with the uh, yo the stalemate tricks. Oh man, I know very well. Shout out to the levy game. I remember that. Oh, them stalemate tricks is real, my guy. Right, geez, too. And what do you do? Well, that was nice right there. That was very nice. <laughs>
He he saw it though. He saw it. But man, like those cellmate tricks are they hurt. They hurt to be the person on the end that was winning. I personally know. And you know, the person that did it is like, yes, I escaped with a draw. Yes. Come on, bro. Come on. Find it. Where is it? There's a check. Yeah, Ali Reza Drew. Ali Reza Drew. There it is. Black one. GG. And there was two mates. This is the reason why. There was a checkmate here. And if I don't go here, well, there's that checkmate, of course. The obvious one. And then there's a checkmate on the back rank like there was right there. So um, I think that concludes round four. Let's take a look at the standings really quickly here. We got Big Fish in first place. A lot of people with fours. Like, look at that. You know, they hot today, man. The Sabres are hot. These boys are not playing, guys. These boys are not playing, but we will we will return shortly, guys. So don't go anywhere. Sorry. Um, we're actually going to uh, take a quick break. So don't go anywhere, guys, and we'll see you in a few minutes.
Welcome back guys, National Master James Canty III here. Let's go, it's Title Tuesday, okay? So let, here we go guys, $1,600 prize fund. Three minutes, one second increment, it's Blitz. Every Tuesday, the best of the best, the big dogs came out to play. Here's the format, 11 rounds every Tuesday. Three minutes, one second increment, and here are the prizes. 750 for first, 400 for second, 150 for third, and $100 for fourth place, with best female being 100 and best stream being $100. Right now, we in round four, guys. So let's get to back to the action. Round five is actually starting as we speak right now with Big Fish Fedeseev, uh, Vladimir Fedeseev in the first place right now. So let's see what he's doing. Let's see him play some big boy chess because he came to play it with the big dogs. So we have D4 and D5. I'm not a D4 player at all. But after D5, though, we do have what we call the Slav defense here, or sometimes even a semi in some certain and some move orders make it a semi and stuff like that. But this is this is pretty cool. What's up, Squidardo? Squidardo. What up, bro? Okay, so E4 here. Um, yep, B5 being a main intention, trying to hang on to the pawn uh, or whatever here. White's saying, hey, I'm just going to have a big center. And Black's going to try to attack it as many times as possible. Moves like E6, of course, is going to help defend against a D5 push. C5 eventually is going to happen after maybe protecting this pawn. But we need to develop our pieces first, like he's doing. Bishop B7, knight to D7, bishop to E7, pretty simple. Castling, playing knight to B6, defending the pawn, playing B4 to attack E4. Now we can put the knight in the center of the board here, as he does. And if knight takes, we undouble our pawns and just keep the extra pawn. And here I actually love black's position here. We just keeping that extra pawn right now. This G5 square we can just take away with H6 and bishop E7. Have a pretty nice game here. Pretty nice. Now, it's going to be cramped right now because it's going to be cramped because we have this extra pawn. We have not played C5, which is very, very important as a chess player. As It's very, very important. Oh, he in trouble. And it must be like knight takes F7. Weirdly enough, it might be this move. But, um, or something similar. Yep, there it is. Something like it. <laughs> I knew something was there. Something was there, but um, it's it's very scary. But you have to you don't have space. Any game, every game is black at some point. You usually want to play c5, and it gives you extra space that you may need. And in this case, we definitely need some space. Knight can come in the d6, and we in the mix, like for real. This knight is definitely going crazy here on b7, the f7 square. Bishop to g5 is actually a legit threat because after pawn takes, there's queen takes. You got to block with a knight and give it back. It's like, I mean, we can draw more arrows here, right? This is getting crazy all over here. So black needs to be extremely careful here. And it says something in the kind of position. Think about this. Think about this. Right now, the evaluation says it's equal. And white just sacked a piece, right? What does that say about your position? So it's very scary. Very scary. It causes accuracy here, also being a blitz game. And now Fedesey of going down on time here. This could be devastating for him. Rook D4, Rook D forever. <laughs> it's a clever name. But that was not a move. Okay, apparently, it, it goes up a little bit more. But practical chances, honestly, I love the way that, what he just did here. He just honestly sidestepped. So, like, what do you do if you're playing white here? Because, like, this seems good. I'm out the way. How do I'm, I'm fine, right? I'm about to head for the heels, run for the heels in defense, and get the rest of my pieces all out and then enjoy the piece advantage? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Lots of lessons on there. Yeah, chess.com, absolutely. There's lots of lessons on there. Absolutely. Go do that. Who is Big Fish? Yes, that's Fedeseev. Fedeseev, good luck. Yeah. No problem. Oh, he did play this Bishop F7 move. I saw this, but I immediately dismissed it because Queen E7 is just a move. Wait a second. Hold up. Oh, no. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I was going to try to get Knight C5 to work, but the Queen and the Bishop hit C5. So if I move the queen, the c5 square is still gone. Miraculously, white is still winning this position right now. I guess it has to do with the e6 pawn and, like, uh, and the king safety. But it feels like we can wiggle out of this. Bishop c8, king c7. Knight d6 is always annoying. Yeah, and there it is. Yeah, Knight d6 is always going to be annoying. We got to get rid of this. He's just sitting here. And what is it? And Reassess Your Chest, the fourth edition by Jeremy Silman. Great book, by the way. You want to learn strategy. And just like a strategic book on chess, how to play chess. That will be Reassess Your Chess 4th Edition, which is a very, very good book. Um, but he talks about knights being here. Is, is This is now an octopus, right? That's what they call it. When they get this close in your territory, it's, an octopus. it's plus 6 right now. Look at this game. It's plus 6. Wow. How long have you been playing chess? I've been playing chess uh, 21 years this this year, actually. 20. Oh, my goodness. This is... 
Let's get this off the screen. I can't. I'm covering my camera. Like I gotta, I gotta block this. There might be some kids watching this. How long you been playing chess? Yeah, 21 years. The Legend Canty with the call today. Love it. What's up, Chris Factor 99? What's going on? What's going on? Wait, what happened? His queen's gone too. It's still plus six somehow though. But it feels like everything's hanging. It feels like black's getting out of this, to be honest. Bishop takes h5. I'm hitting the rook. It's plus seven. Like, wow. What a change in events here. Wow, nice. This semiconductor, yeah. Yeah. Very nice position for white, but one, two, three, four, five versus one, two, three, four. We're up a piece. Up a rook, yeah. Up a whole rook. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, after you do the piece count, always no material count, right? So after you do a quick piece count, then you realize, oh, I'm just up a rook. Rock D4, yeah. He took that game there. I think this is, uh, is this, where is he from? Oh, no, never mind. I thought this was somebody else. He looked like uh, Billingsworth. That's what I thought he was from Australia. I've been seeing his ads on Facebook. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I see you, bro. You know, Bishop E2. I thought this was him. It kind of looks like him. Bishop E2. Hitting C4. Bishop E2. Yeah, I'm just up a rook. Like, everything wins. Now, don't get too, you know, over ambitious. But you are up a rook. I can just take this. Right. That's over there. And he's not going to resign. He's like, no, I'm resigning. <laughs> You know, right? That's funny. Egg, eggs and bacon. Like, rook d4 just happened to be up a rook. How convenient or how, and, you know, how close was that? Jeffrey. Look at big Jeffrey. Big Jeffrey X came with the X today. Jeffrey X. I wonder if he says that. Like, it, just exactly like that. That would be so cool. Jeffrey X, five out of five. He's going off. He's bringing the X today. He's Xing off some names. Five out of five for Jeffrey. Not playing. There's still six rounds left, but that man came to play, obviously. We're going to check out um who's still playing. Is Faruja still playing? We definitely want to see if he plays still. Here we go. Faruja is playing. Let's check it out. Faruja got three and a half, though. Wow. Not like a surprise. Not It is a surprising score because he's such a strong player. But at the same time, it, it's a lot of chess left, guys. We still got like six rounds, so yikes. Hey, ooh, that's a nasty looking mate. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful checkmate there. Beautiful. So he takes down that one. Now he has four and a half. We're going to check out. Look at this. Jospin playing Prague. Praga from India. Wow. Young Prodigy. Prodigy GM here. Of course, this is a super strong game right here. But it says a lot about Jospin, right? Like he just, Jospin's up time. I mean, he's up a few seconds, but he's up time. His position I would prefer here. Like he's just, you know, being annoying. Takes, takes. Wasn't that a move? Oh, he couldn't go back there. Takes, takes, check. Look at the flex real hard. Flex real hard. You know, like work C7, push that boy. That's right. Pass pawns must be pushed. Check up. Oh, that's not a move. Get him out of here. What are we thinking about? Takes, yeah. And move the rooks around. This is out. This is over. Man. That's a Jospin been playing strong, bro. Let's update the standings. Look at this. Five out of five. Angry Twin. I forgot who that was. I forgot who Angry Twin was. Can we get a... a, a um, a name for that angry twin i forgot who this was but angry twin very strong as well jospin um jeffrey x here below rook d4 i mean look at these fives like they came to play wow 12 team then he ain't got the 2800 i mean he's a national master here right like this man pushing tight 2850 of course it's only a matter of time for he get his big boy title so good stuff man these guys are very very strong as we see eric hansen though Let's see what we got. E. Hansen, the man himself. So black. Oh, wow. What is going on right now? What is going on? Oh, snap. Oh, whoa. I thought he hung a rook. I thought it was over, but he didn't. It, you know, man, when you don't see something and it shocks you, you know, how do you feel? Like you just jump. You just jump. And I did not. For some reason, I just was not looking at that. But it worked. He had that in the in the bag. He had that in the bag, bro. That was amazing. Absolutely amazing there. Pretty cool chess. Check out these next these next games here. Uh supposed to be a draw. And we always say supposed to be because a lot of things can happen here. People can definitely mess this up. Can I just take the pawn? I'm definitely pushing for a win now. And we say pushing because there is technique here involved to actually earn this draw. It's not just a draw. You have to earn the draw. So 
let's see if he's able to earn the draw here you're supposed to just check yep check when the king gets close and you just step around yep check when the king gets close that's pretty nice that works as well you can go here you can back up if you like he does you can go around it actually that's a blunder yeah so you have to go king before or move the knight correct yep correct yeah, he's playing this correctly he's playing this correctly now with this one second increment it does make it tricky here so you want to make sure that you are not messing this up but this is this is indeed guys a theoretical book draw rook knight king and rook versus king knight is is a draw here it is a draw and if you ever get to the back rank then the key here is actually keeping one square in between them two squares actually this is deep it's deep right here two squares in between on the back rank so if you have your king and two squares in between on the back he lost by the way he missed it he missed it right there but if you have um two squares in between on the back rank you are lost but if you keep that one square in between them you actually can maneuver and get, keep the king close enough to be around it's like crazy it's yeah you really have to study these in games guys but when you study them they hey, you remember them or hope to remember them and then you use them and when you need to in these kind of situations here so black definitely was winning though he missed his shot he missed his shot it was a chance to play rook h2 and pin the knight there because they blitzing this stuff out now the 50 move rule is going to be in, involved that's what's going to happen here it's probably going to be a 50 move rule no checks i mean or no 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 checks no captures and uh no pawn pushes that should make it a 50 move roll soon. Yeah, there it is. 50 move roll. Draw. 50 move roll. Okay. Still got games left after that. Man, that felt like the last game. Oh, nice game. Somebody won. Great job. WCM. Women's Candidate Master. Great job. Oh, this is the next round already. Next round has already started. Let's take a let's take a look at the standings real quick. Five. So we got a few fives here. We got about a dozen maybe. Maybe, maybe less. But we got some fives here. Look at the fives. How do you access Title Tuesday leaderboards? Uh, you can uh, you can do that from the upcoming or the in progress tab. Actually, sorry, you have to go to the in progress tab. You can take a look at the standings there. Five three three M. What's up? Welcome to the stream. I do. You can check the chat for that. It's in the chat right now. Okay, so let's check this game out. I actually want to check out Jeffrey, guys. So let's go check out Jeffrey X here. Jeffrey Zhang playing a very strong. I am here, Liam from the Netherlands here. So we uh, Jeffrey is a, a a star, of course, young star, and it's good to see him play. So let's check out Jeffrey. Let's see what happened from the beginning here. It looks like some type of pawn sacrifice. So it was a scotch, scotch game, but uh, four knights in the way. Yeah, four knights, scotch. Takes, bishop g4, f3. Takes, check. Oh, okay, so no pawn sack. But there is some, there is some counterplay. There's some, like, very nice bishop play. As you see, both bishops aim to this side of the board. If you ever feel pressure, he immediately actually did exactly what I was about to say. If you feel pressure on you, or like you, you're not the one attacking, you probably want to trade. It's guaranteed you probably want to trade. There's a famous book that I like to study. I'm still studying it now. But I recommend it, especially if you're trying to get better at middle games. Now, it's not an easy one. I'm just recommending it. It's not easy, though. But mastering middle games, uh, mastering chess middle games from um, GM Alexander Panchenko. Just studying... That book is really nice, especially the defense chapter. Defense chapter talks about a lot. Basically, hey, you getting pressured? This stuff on you? You don't like your position? Probably trade. And that's what he did there. And now it's just making it a little bit easier to handle what white throws at you. Now, of course, this is uh, annoying. It's very annoying, but we do we need to stay active. So Rick to D1, hitting the D3 pawn, of course, Bishop takes is very appealing. But this will go into a draw, as they say, or uh, end game. All rook end games are drawn, right? That's what they say. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Are there any super GMs in this title Tuesday? Yeah, they got um, Ferruja and uh, Jeffrey X, I guess, right? Jospom. Yeah, you got like some, I mean, with a lot of these people, 3,000 plus, right? You know, Prague is in too. Yeah, Prague is in too. Good games, though. Great games. Okay, so what happened? We heard a move. Queen takes b3. He just gave up the pawn. Did he play bishop b5? I don't know about this. It might be giving him too much counterplay as white. So what if I just take on f6? And then takes, and then queen takes. And then make some look for the king. That's like the maybe the best way. Because he's going to take on d3. So we got bishop takes f6, g takes, queen takes. The rook is hanging. So probably queen takes d3. Taking a pawn, defending at the same time. Then I need to play something like h3 myself to make some loot for the king and then make sure my my uh, my rook tries to lift. If I can get the rook lift going, then I can mayhem. 
you know so this is definitely something that he's probably thinking about right now or he might be thinking outside the box and going a whole nother route um, 12 team crushing Eric Hansen out the opening oh I want I want to go see that but I also want to see this so like I, I'm like torn between the two games there between team 12 team okay oh, man right, we're just gonna jump to it hold on where's he at 12 team all right there's a check okay yeah it looks like a draw or something let's go to this game what he getting smashed whoa what happened whoa out the opes big fella out the opes out the opes 17 moves in with a grin let's see what happens okay so there, there was a um <clears throat> what is this called larson system b3 okay so everything looks fine though oh he just oh wow oh wow dang and it just went crazy the engine just went nuts after that hmm gotta spend some time here actually let me see This is uh this is ugly. This is pretty ugly. No, it's Queen B one mate after Queen takes Queen B one mate after Queen takes No, the Queen did take. What are you talking about in the, in this game with Jeffrey? It ended in the draw. Yeah, Queen takes F six. Yeah, he went this route. After takes takes they ended in the draw. He just took a perpetual and then after Queen takes you have to go H three. And H3 is fine. And then you can probably take on C7 or try to rook lift as quickly as possible. This was like our goal. This is what we wanted to do. That's what I would have went for. I mean, just go for this. You got pressure here. You got pressure here. King's unsafe. This is like, you know, uh, this is usually what should happen. But back to the Hansen game here. They, they took a draw in the Jeffrey game. So check here. Rook to D7. Looks like it defends the king. And what's the follow-up? Take on B6? That couldn't have been right. What? Knight D7. That's gross. Come on now. That can't be right. Yeah, and the reason why is because you need to attack back. The best defense is offense. I'm going to say that again. The best defense is offense. So an offensive move is what you're looking for, even in defense. So Rook D7 was that move. This one does not do it, and it feels like we are in more trouble than what we were in before. It may, it, you might even have Rook takes. This seems like a move. Puzzle rush him somehow. Queen h4 runs in the knight f6. That's why I dismissed it. Queen e4 is not forcing enough. So um, I, I swear it had to be like rook takes. Let's go back though. Right here. I want to see what the engine sees. Well, the best move right now. So queen h4 was the move. Queen h4 was the move. Not caring about knight f6 at all. And then it says just rook d to c1. Take the file with a smile. St and, and in style with c7 there. Okay. So that was, that was the plan. That was the plan. Let's turn the engine off. Okay. So this is still good, though. We're working the position like a magician here. And Eric is down a lot of time. This is a big loss for Eric here. I mean, not big. Uh, in terms of rating, yes. You know, 29.57, 28.50, 100 point difference there at least. Ooh, yikes. That's out. That's mate. Yikes. GG. 12 team went off on that game. Whoa, Ferndale here. Oh, what's up? Spoon jamming, man. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm from Michigan. Let's try Michigan. Yeah, thanks for the explanation. No, man, no problem. Let's watch NBA. No problem. This is what we're here for, man, to explain, and you guys can learn, and we have fun here while we watch these boys play. It's 600. Guys, get this. It's 600 players in this tournament. 600 players in this tournament, and all of them are titled. The, yeah, the strongest event that happens on any Tuesday at any time anywhere across the globe is this event right here, Title Tuesday. So here we have six out of six, only two people here. 12 team. Shout out to the strong NMs. Let me flex real quick. Let me flex because that's 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 me right there. He, he represent. OK, just because you got this little NM don't mean don't mean nothing. Don't mean it doesn't mean anything. I understand. I understand 12 team. You have a special place in my heart. What does it mean? It means national master. We just got to get our norms, bro. We just got to norm up, you know, time to level up once we can go back to OTB. Time to level up, baby. Okay. So let's see. Um, whoa, this is a nasty looking position. Sacking. I was about to say Rook takes check, but like he runs away. But does he really run away? Oh, man. Give me everything. Whoa, everything must go sale. Something's, something's about to fall. It had to be. Rook takes B1 at the very least gets my piece back. At the very least. He plays Bishop B4. What? What? Oh, he's blocking a check. That's why. Okay, I got you. I got you. Man, that just felt so ugly, though. Felt so ugly. Maybe. No problem. No problem. 
He's number one in Bug he, in Bug House. Top five Bug House players easily. Dang. Oh yeah, you know I have seen him play a lot. Yo, we in here. What's up, Nathan? What's going on, bro? No, you're right. Actually, I have seen him play. That's where I remembered him from. He played a lot of Bug House. Him and um, what's the other one? Chicken Cross Road. Anybody know that that name? Uh oh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He hung his queen. He hung his queen here. I'm sorry. Wait, wait a second. Did Jospum lose? <gasps> he lost his game. That's a heart attack move. Like, wow. Oh my goodness. He probably, man, I would be so angry right here. I would be so mad. That like this is like, you know, who's seen it on stream? You know, the, the mouse breaking or like, you know, the punching the computer screen. That's extreme. That's extreme. This computer costs too much. I'm not doing that. But, you know, throwing chairs. I mean, he, what a what a way to like. I don't know what he was thinking here. I think he might have been. But he had one second. You had a check down here. He just didn't see it. Oh, wow. There were so many threats here. He just didn't see the check down here. Okay, so what's the sequence though? Like, this is very interesting. Here, because there's a lot of stuff going on. King C3. Oh, and then you have to go back to G6. Wow, interesting. So he could have did that in the first place. Yeah, he had this move, so he just kind of missed that. Yeah, he had one second though, one point nine. That's why she had throwing race. Yeah, yeah, he had one point nine seconds. So it's it's hard to be as accurate, right? I mean, you can't really blame him. It's, it's very hard to do that. It's extremely hard. Six out of six, though, 12 team. We got four people with six here still running away with it with five rounds to go. Five rounds to go. Let's check some more games. Oh, is this? This is round seven. Okay, perfect. Game has, uh, game has started. 12 team. Let's check him out. What you got for us? So he really lived by this B3. Shout out to you Larson System players if you won B3. Shout out to you. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not. But, I mean, it is annoying. I have took some nasty L's to it. I will say that. Now I know I don't take no L's anymore. <laughs> not, not frequently, but man, I mean, I did, I did have to study. I had to study like a book that for a few days of like, I need to get this right. Cause I got so tired of seeing this B3 opening and losing to it. It was annoying. It's very strong in certain cases, to be honest, to be honest. So, um, and you see it being em employed here from 12 team who was just, Blitzing everything out. Like, look how he's blitzing this out. Look at his time advantage over this GM here, Grandmaster from Germany. Huge time advantage. And I'm sure he knows what he's doing because of the experience. Usually, if you play the Larson system a lot, you get a lot of experience here. And the experience a lot, even if it may not be the most accurate. As you see, the engine lights black here. But the time advantage is significant, very big significant here due to his experience in this position with white. It's very nice to use the clock as a piece as well. Even though you have the pieces on the board, if you don't use the clock as one, it will turn against you and you'll lose and make decisions. You shouldn't because you're in time trouble. That's usually how it goes. So let's see what happens. Yeah, he's, he's definitely going down a lot of time here. Lots of time right now. I'm not, not moving too much. There it is. Bam, bam. He takes it. And I saw this too, but uh, both of these pawns are attacked. Did he just drop a piece? Oh, no. He Okay. I saw you. I saw you. Okay. I see you. So can I do this? If I'm giving it back, I might as well get something for it. That's usually the, the cause. Ooh, does he have queen f6 there? Whoa. That's why he was thinking so long. This guy is playing like tactics win games. That's crazy. If bishop takes c7... Because, hey, if I'm about to go out, I'm going to go out with a bang. That's usually the theme. If I'm going to go out, let's go out with a bang. So bishop takes c7, right? Because the queen, moving the queen, he's just going to take the bishop. So you're trying to get something extra, which would be bishop takes c7. But instead of just taking it, when you find a good move, look for a better one. Edward Lasker, right? Queen f6 hitting the rook. So the rook is hit, and that's a problem. That's a problem, and now you have to move the queen, and he takes the rook over here, and that's night-night, have a good day. You have to play like queen d1. What? Queen takes g6? He has lost his absolute mind. I do not believe in this. So what did he get for that? A knight, a rook, and a pawn. That's nine points. That's nine points, y'all. He did get a knight, a rook, and a pawn for that, didn't he? Did he? Wait, let's, let's go back. Yeah. Oh, he got a bishop. Sorry. Bishop, rook, and a... So more like... More like 9.2. 
So literally a little bit more. A literally a little bit more, to be honest. Um, and it's four pieces. Yeah, I just looked at some theory yesterday with something similar to this. The modern having something like this, the modern defense being a very flexible opening with tactics. And there is a line, I think it was in the bishop e3 or bishop g5 lines. But it was uh, doing exactly this, sacrificing the queen for like, you know, and you have all your minor pieces and some stuff like that. Hmm. But here you only have like two minor pieces in the rooks. I can see how this could be equal, though. You, you know, it's weird, right? This is what they call compensation, guys. Some of you are like, man, he's just crushing. He's just absolutely crushing. Where's his queen? But because just because you don't have the queen doesn't mean that you're losing. If you take, you know, sometimes you can take two rooks and they are stronger than a queen. It's very, very um, interesting. And that's like some of the best beauty of chess is you can sacrifice a queen for multiple pieces and have an advantage, actually. So let's see. I mean, White's making this work. Maybe bring the bishop back because it is attacked right now. We don't want to give it up. So bringing the bishop maybe here and planting it on the f4 square or the e5 square so we can take and put the rook on c7 eventually. You got to use the pieces that you have. <laughs> What's this game now, right? Crazy. Nine does equal nine at the end of the day. I'll, I'll see you, Walnut. You already know, bro. You already know, bro. They don't call him a pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name now huh that's the name that's what they call it me now ferguson let's go appreciate it two rooks for a queen for the other day it was a mistake so i think it must be situational it is situational absolutely great job chess nathan chess it is definitely situational right because so there's many cases i'm a fan of the knockmanson gambit you can look it up fan i'm a big fan man i got some big wins with that knockmanson gambit um but uh the knockmanson though has some lines where you actually give up your queen is black for two rooks, but I have a queen and a knight, and the counter plays very nice, and black is not all, re all um, coordinated with the pieces. It's completely different. Is there an Untitled Tuesday? They have something on chess.com. There's a club about it, I think. Have you ever played Chess Hustlers in NYC? What would you say their average rating is? I played Chess Hustlers, not in NYC, but different cities. Uh, and say average, average is probably like 15, 1600. A little bit higher, maybe. But that's the average. Sometimes you have up there in the park to up to... Sometimes you have an expert or a little bit higher. 2,000, 2,100. Yikes. Whoa, hold up. Bishop F3. It's getting spicy here. King here. Check. King here. Oh, what about, what about Rook F5? It doesn't work. There's nothing there. I just... Somebody offered to draw. Who was it? 12 team offered to draw. Man. I mean, that's a, that's a nice draw. And actually, it is. It's a draw by perpetual. King F2. You go back to E2. Check. Well, maybe a king g3. That's risky, though. That's asking to get made it. Like, asking to get made it. Yeah. That's, this is definitely different here. Place king f2. Question is, is he going to try to go for more? Could he, could he, you know, that's a good question. Knight of Valor. Um, he could have probably tried g5. Uh, but you do have to be accurate. And the time's very low here. So he's just going to take that for pet. Look at all these pieces. If these pieces get active, it's a wrap. I mean, shout out to 12 team, bro. Like, he got that right. Wow, Eric Blunder. Dang, man, Eric having a bad tournament now. He was playing great. Ooh, hold up. Check this out. Faruja Svidler. Oh, we missed that. Dang. Svidler took out the young Fina. Faruja. Svidler took him down and says, hey, you know, I still know how to play this game, young fella. I still know how to play this game. Six and a half out of seven. No losses for Peter. Svidler over here. The Svid. Oh man, look at the man pushing tight. Seven out of seven, though. Rook D forever. It's like going off. Silently, though. Very silently. Because we haven't said his we said his name once, right? When he beat who did he beat? <clears throat> I think he beat Eric. We was watching him play. I don't remember who he beat though, but we saw only one game that he played. I think he beat Eric. But with that being said, I mean he just crept up here slowly. And then now look at him. Seven out of seven. Seven out of seven. The man pushing tight. He pushing real tight there. Man's pushing tight. How long did it take you to get the NM title? Um, great question, man. Um, let me actually see real quick. Any games left here? Yeah, we got wonderful time, Min Lee. Here. I started at eight years old and I did um what was it? I hit master at seventeen before graduating high school. King here. King out the way. 
Oh, you can't catch nothing. That's a wrap. Yeah, Min Lee. Min Lee's a beast, as we already know. Min Lee, yeah, that's a wrap there. You, you're not catching those. Those boys are too fast running a 4-4 four -four in a 40. Easy. Okay, let's go. Uh, Artemiev. <laughs> What's he showing us here? He got five, so he took some dubs. He took some L's there, I mean. Took some L's. Rook B. I mean, G2. Rook D2 seems good. Rook G2, no, snap, snap. That doesn't work. Mm. Oh, yeah, he does it anyway. Oh, I don't have to take that. Wow, what? He gave all that up. This is still winning, though. This is still winning. When you're hitting GM, thanks. Good questions, also. Hey, man, we got to wait for oh, tournaments to open up first. Could you become, if you started rating at 1,016? Oh, I mean, possible. It's possible, but I highly recommend you get coaching so you can cut the learning curve. Min Lee might as well be a GM. It's many players like that. Yeah, absolutely. Min Lee is definitely already there. He'd be, he's nasty. 3,000 in many time formats. Oh, well, at least he's been there at 3,000. Here we go. Oh, this should be a draw. So let's say that again. This should be a draw. Let's say it together, everyone. This should be a draw. Now let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Time trouble involved. People moving rooks and going crazy. Let's see if this is going to be a draw or if we're going to have a catastrophic blunder where somebody jumps off the building. Let's see what happens. It should be a draw. It should be. It should be. A draw was offered. Draw accepted. Okay, no bloodshed there. Everything's cool. Everybody just put your guns down. Everything's okay. We're good to go. All right, that's a draw. That's a that's a draw. Uh, this is completely winning. Completely winning for black. Completely winning. Everything's winning here. Moving a little bit too fast, so just don't mess this up. Just don't mess this up. Now it's very hard to mess this up. Now, very hard to mess this up. But I mean, the way that he's moving, it seems like he, he wants to stalemate. You also have 15 seconds on the clock, so this is more than enough time to finish this out. Looks like he's not going to move, though. He's going to let the time run out. He's going to let the time run out, and the time does run out there. And that concludes round seven. Let's take a look at the standings as round eight is about to start. Rook D4. Yeah, Rook D forever. Seven out of seven. Svidler with six and a half. Min Lee. And then you got Joe Bava, the man himself. Joe Bava, right? Man, that, that man is Badir. Joe Baba, uh, 12 team, and then we got some other heavy hitters. But, man, Ferruja must have took some L's, bro. He not even – we don't even see him. We see Jeffrey, though. Jeffrey Zhang and uh, our Timmy Ev is up here. All right, let's see. L games are starting, though. Games are starting. Take a look at Rook D forever. <laughs> Rook D forever. Wow, wonderful time. Min Lee is a monster here. So, T Tory attack, but kind of London-ish. But the Tory attack is uh, quite annoying, actually. Quite annoying. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I actually had some problems. I had to go look this up. Because I was like, nobody plays the Tory attack. What is it? And I like, you know, Kings Indian players or Indian players out there. Anybody that plays Nimzo, Bogo, Queens Indian, Kings Indian. You will be hit with this Tory attack sometimes. And it's very, very weird. Like, I was like, what is this? How do you fight against this? And finally, I have something that works a little bit. But, man, you will get hit and very hard in the face. Um, until you get these things correct, you know, yo, Canty, what's up, Flox? Welcome to the stream. Tori and Trump are annoying. Oh, I know. I had enough Trumpowski. Shout out to Levy, you know, and he played tonight, but, <laughs> you know, shout out to Levy, man. He plays so much Trumpowski. I'm Trumpowski'd out. I'm Trumpowski'd out. I don't want to play it no more. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it anymore. But, uh, I did get a lot of, you know, but I will tell you one thing. When you play something a lot against someone or you get it a lot, when you play someone else, man, I crushed this one guy the other day. It was like a day ago or something. And I'm like, shoot, thanks, Levy. <laughs> I was like, yo, thanks, Levy. I crushed this guy. It was just great. But because I got so much experience playing like, you know, 10, 15 games with that uh, against him. I mean, against somebody like Levy is extremely strong. Bishop takes F5. I like white here. White's definitely pushing for more. I think just because of the king safety, this is kind of shaky and I can break it up. So, but it has to be accurate. It has to be correct. So what if we go F5 right now? This is a very committal move. But after F5, if we take on C4, we do take on G6, make it a little weaker. And then take with the queen. Like, and this is a target, a huge target up here. Huge. Uh, he has to be considering it. Let's see what he does. 
I played the Nemzo and I finally found something comfortable against the Tori and Trapowski. Yeah, that's boy. Looking forward to it. There it is. He takes takes and then he's gonna he's gonna play F5. There it is. What makes Tori different from Trampowski? The uh Trampowski is Bishop G5 immediately. D4, Knight F6, Bishop G5. And just like look and they stare at you real hard and see if you start sweating. D4, Knight F6, Bishop G5, and they literally will stare at you until you do something. My boy Min Lee on the spotlight. Nice. Yeah, Min Lee's a monster. Let's go, Min Lee. Let's go. Yeah, I'm definitely rooting for Min in this game because I, I actually know he's cool. He told the boss. Yeah, what's up, Lou Doser? Yo, come hang out with us later on. Welcome to the stream. Knight takes G6. Yeah. I mean, way to defend. This is why he's winning the tournament right now. Look at his defense. The knight is on e5. Look, just understand the position. Chess is about understanding. Great chess is about understanding. The other half of it is memorization. But understanding is first. If you understand his position, and how do you understand? Many times, the pawns are the GPS, the structure, the pawn structure. So here, with this isolated pawn, black is doing exactly what he was supposed to do. Put the knight on e5, and the, the uh, like we said before, an isolated pawn structures, or any pawn, any pawn, doesn't matter. Like, the square in front of the pawn is the most important square. So he took advantage of it with the knight here. There's now a rook on e7 that's also taking advantage of the square. We already have this as well. And this defense here on g6. Now, of course, white actually is trying to press forward. But, man, we have to give credit here to rook, uh, rook d forever. Yo, can we get his name? <laughs> hey, what? Hold on. Simon. Can we get his name, bro? Who is this guy? Who is this right here? He is going crazy. He's playing really, really good chess, too, by the way. Rustam, okay, or Rustam. Bishop e seven, a good response to the Trumpowski. Um, you can't even play Bishop e seven. You don't have time to. Imagine this: d four. You play Knight f six. Bishop g five, and then what do you do? You can't play Bishop e seven. There's no, you can't haven't moved e six yet. You haven't moved e six. Queen c six though. Queen c six. Yeah, He's playing really good. I mean, keeping men on his toes here. You know, GM from Kazakhstan. Yeah. Rusta. D6, bishop e7. After you play d6, he takes it. He takes on f6. So now you have to face the bishop takes lines. Then you have to choose. Are you going to take g, g takes f6 and use bishop g7, f5, rook g8 and use the file? Or are you going to take e, e takes f6? But then you have to play an early c6, d5, f5 to take over the center. And it's very close still in those situations. It's pretty tough sometimes if you're not knowing what you're doing. Rook to d1. Out the way. Wow, wait, wait. This is very surprising because this is straight up hanging. It is hanging. And man, I'm tempted. I love taking pawns. I mean, I'm definitely into, uh, you know, Yasser Sirwan, like he loves grabbing pawns. You know, I love to grab a pawn. So like this is here. That pawn is definitely sitting here. But I guess he's saying, hey, it's going to be here for a while because yeah, there it is. Like grab that boy. But it's, um, it's an isolated pawn. And with the pawn being isolated, you know, you do everything you can, trade the pieces that defend it, and which was the bishop. And like he was doing a great job here. And now we take the pawn when we want to. And now Min Lee is actually down a pawn here in a slightly worse endgame and down on time as well. All the odds are against him. And bishop versus knight with pawns on the same color as the bishop. Just all losing in every area, if you think about this from a strategic standpoint. Ricky 7, though, it does defend it. And white could be going for a draw. Rook e7, and white could be definitely going for a draw here. I like 94 followed by g5. Usually it gets white. Yeah, I like that too. I've tried that one. I also do the 94 c5 one, queen b6, and like, you know, it's weird. I just play weird ones sometimes. Anyone know when Levy versus uh, Rosen is on? It's going to be on tonight. Starts at, uh, I think, 9 p.m. Eastern time from when the schedule I looked at. I think it's at 9 Eastern, 9 to 12. Midnight, which means it's gonna be hype. I'm gonna grab some drinks and uh, be relaxed and like ready to watch that. That's gonna be fun. So make sure you guys are there. It's gonna be here tonight on Chess.com's channel. So make sure you guys are here tonight. Big boy matchup. I am versus GM. Or I am not a GM. I am not a GM uh, match. Is what I meant to say. How do you qualify for this tournament? This one you have to be a titled player. This is called Titled Tuesday. So that means you have to have a title. FIDE or USCF. There's only one USCF title. This is the NM title. Um, so you can be anyone, NM, CM, FM, IM, GM, don't matter. But they get to play here. And look at this. And Min Lee is definitely trying to fix this position that he's in. 
Now we have pass pawns. Pass pawns must be pushed here. And black's going to ease. He's going to easily walk through this one. Steamroll it. H4. Yeah, you get your pawn back. That is not a move, Minley. That's not going to work there, big fella. But he only has five or six seconds left here. He's going to resign in a few, probably. Sucks to be him in this position here, man. Rook D4. Rook D forever. It's like this man is swinging. Like he just beat Min Lee, right? You know, you got to realize what you just said there. He beat Min Lee, right? I just realized it said Title Tuesday. I thought it said Tilted Tuesday all this time. You know, many people think that. Many people, and then sometimes I'm talking to students and they're like, yeah, you know, I saw you doing Tilted Tuesday. I'm like, bro, it's titled. It's titled Tuesday. It's titled. So you're not the only one. You're not the only one. Yeah, it's Tilted, bro. Tilted Tuesday. No, 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 no. Title Tuesday. Titled Tuesday. So titled players. That's why you see all the red here. Titled titled players okay eight out of eight for rook d4 playing excellent chess eight out of eight the man came to play today no one expected him to be doing this right now eight out of eight i don't think he expected it either i mean you do want to have realistic expectations and i think i don't think he came in like yeah i'm about to just crush these guys today like you know you know you say that but like that doesn't actually always happen and he went in today and definitely showing a uh, much stronger performance than his rating to be honest very, very strong. Uh, I welcome a tournament called Tilted Tuesday. <laughs> you know, they actually have one for untitled players. It's called an Untitled Tuesday. They actually have a group on chess.com, stuff like that. You can Google them. Definitely. It's on chess.com if you want to play in the Untitled Tuesday until you get a title. Uh, so many people have tilted during Title Tuesday. That's right. That's right. So, okay, here it is. Uh, Rick takes C7. And, yeah, this is a draw. We're just going to take this pawn as we should and easy draw there easy draw on to the next we got about uh six games left here renato we saw him play yesterday in arena kings he was having a rough arena kings yesterday it was 960 but he was definitely having a rough one but then i think he finished nicely he he was like messed up it was bad for him we saw like three l's in a row or sometimes maybe not in a row but we saw three games of him that was all l's oh he got made it oh my goodness he got made it now uh, renato made it like that's that was crazy about the queen and got made it yikes that hurts that hurts i felt that one and that is round eight and we great now let's actually see the standings one more time here eight out of eight for rook d4 seven and a half for peter and then uh we got another seven and a half here from germany here guys pretty nice and we're going to return with round nine ten and eleven right after a short break guys so don't go anywhere hope you hopefully you're enjoying title tuesday but we will be right back guys so don't go anywhere
Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We have uh, the last few rounds here of Title Tuesday. Let's go. It's Title Tuesday. $1,600 prize fund, three minutes, one second increment, and the title players. Best of the best, 11 rounds every Tuesday. This is the best place to be every Tuesday at this time. Three minutes, one second increment, and here are the prizes. We got $750, $400, $150, $100, and then the best female stream, $100, and best stream, $100, guys. You are ready now. We're back to it. Here we go. Round nine is actually starting. So we're going to check out the big boys here because uh, Rook D4 ever, Rook D4 ever has been going crazy. Eight out of eight. If you check the standings here, look at the only person with eight out of eight. That would be Rook D forever over here. Turning up today, came came in swinging very hard. Uh, Peter Svidler right behind him with seven and a half. And uh, Rasmus Vain, Vain is seven and a half out of eight as well. Top three dogs right now. So, of course... Top dogs are going to play here. They are playing, and we've reached the Catalan opening here with, I don't like how this looks. This is very, very scary, but it is an opposite color bishop game. So there is a chance for attacking for literally both sides because this bishop can't oppose this one. So if we're able to attack this king, this bishop won't be any help to us. And vice versa. This bishop will not be any help to what's going on with this diagonal. So you're going to, you may be forced to actually make some concessions like F3. Which is going to suck to play this kind of move here. And it just kind of make weaknesses everywhere else. But you may be able to use it. Especially if we're able to keep this pawn on d4. Well then we might have some type of strong pawn center. That we could use later. Definitely a double edge position. Oh, You can check it right here on um, on my, uh, my profile. Right there on my channel. I have a tab for it. Go over there bro. Queen to c2. Hitting the pawn. Now, he's thinking, thinking right here. I mean, he is really in the think tank. The man went into the tank, but when he comes out, he's probably going to whip his moves out fast. That's usually what happens. You shouldn't think very long and then think very long again. And think that just shows that, you know, you, don't, you really don't know what's going on. And they can definitely press you on time. That's a very good tip to use as a player is pressing your opponent on time. If you realize they start moving slower every move, every move here. So he plays c5 here. Interesting move. That's interesting. He really went for c5 instead. I guess c5 is what he's saying is getting rid of the weakness or the weak pawns. Still two versus two, but don't I just get an extra pawn out of that? I just get an extra pawn. Maybe he's getting it back. Yeah, I was about to say maybe he's getting it back. This is a super draw right here. Super draw. Any tips for someone learning how to play three minute blitz about 600 with no previous experiences, but the chess puzzles? Yeah, absolutely. Andy, stop playing blitz. Stop playing blitz. You need to play 10 out at least, at least, at least because you don't you have to understand instead of just like moving, you know, maybe play afterwards, play afterwards like you would play. Yeah, here's a draw right there. Play blitz after you've done enough rapid and slow games, then you can chill and play some blitz as a reward. For working hard, you want to have a reward system set up for all your studies and stuff like that. But definitely a reward system would use it as a reward to play later, but not not before. Unless that's the only thing you can play because you only got like five minutes before you got to do something. At 600, right, yep, correct, correct, yep. So let's check the standings real quick. So that draw right there still puts him as clear first here. Only one person can catch him, which is Peter Spidler. Let's see how he's doing. Let's see how he's doing. Point five, yeah, it was a draw. Mm -hmm. Don't try to run before you can walk. <laughs> Don't try to run before you can walk, he says. Three, four, five, three, four, five. Uh, pawns on the same side. Yeah, this is a draw. This usually is a book draw, but we'll, we'll say book in a certain. We're just looking at the pawn structure. Pawn structure makes it book book draw. Just, just looking at the pawn structure. If we get the pieces off the board, this would be very draw ish draw ish there's still technique involved but draw ish now we look at the pieces there's activity here on the file here so this is why white and of course the engine says yeah slightly better not even more than a pawn which makes sense but here what this means is uh these double rooks are very very strong here it's giving artemi of some trouble look at his time 20 seconds left on the clock but it's very easy to be worse here it's extremely easy to be a bit worse with the black pieces in this position seems like knight takes f5 seems right but he also wants to think about Rook F2, I'm assuming. Let's see. Thank you very much, amazing community. No problem, Andy. 
Long game, 45 minutes. That's a real long game online. That's a real long game. I always think like 15, 10, 15 minutes should be enough because you got to think about you need to have quantity as well. Quality, yes, that's correct. But quantity, because if you play, you know, one blitz, you know, the, the reason why blitz sometimes is really good to use is because if you're playing really good blitz, meaning like the move, like these games are real theory a lot of times. A three minute, five minute game, you know, they still in theory. Move 30, move 25, right? It's still in theory. But, and that's good, you'll get a lot of games very quickly. Very quickly, you'll get a lot of games. And that's the that's the importance of playing blitz and stuff like that. Because you want to have more experience, which means you need more positions to do so. But if you only play, you know, two 30-minute games a day, that took you two hours and you only played two games, right? So you only got two positions. That's really it. So it's really tough sometimes. Now, this one's a crazy-looking position. Looks drawish, but I don't know yet. I really don't know. I think we we're gonna press for white. We we're gonna press for white. I would. I mean, I'm, I got an extra piece, but it's not easy at all. At all. What's up, Mr. Red? Uh, slimy, Spice Summer. Hello, hello. Are you streaming later? I am. I am. I am. Um, just so that twenty two thousand. Yeah, not a six hundred rating. Yeah, that's what I'm asking myself too. So he says. All right. So um, rates for lessons. You can find the price and all that on there on um uh, Sid on my channel. Just click the link and click about you'll be able to see everything so rick here and rick here right why was that wait 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 wait. i thought he was able hold on man you oof, this looking scary bro you tripping artemiev is getting away what in the world is going on oh king c1 i was about to say bro how do you stop that pawn 93 i guess i don't like that one probably king c1 reason for that we wanted to get the king around Cause now, this is scary. This is scary. How do we like? How do we do this correctly? King is about to come around here. Yeah, like we said. Like we said, this looked like a draw, right? Looked like a draw. Even having that extra piece didn't help him enough. He gonna get the knight around. Probably put the knight here. He could have. That works too. That works too. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful way. You see how Peter did that? Peter did it with ease. You see how fast he did it with ease. It came around the back way. Hey, we're going to hit you one time, hit you again. Flex real hard. Easy draw. I mean, that was sweet, bro. Oh, we're home. What's up, big, big frog? Still streaming. We're still in here. That's right. Did you write Detroit represent? That's right. Plasma. Let's go. Let's go. Absolutely. Um, okay, we're going to check another game. Another game here. We are going to check another one. Four seconds here left for Chess Warrior facing the Bishop pair, which is definitely a scary thing to face. In any time, any way, any day. Definitely scary to face this bishop pair. This bishop swipes the board, and they can do whatever they want on both diagonals. So be very careful when you're facing the bishop pair. Very, very careful. Uh, real one, right? right. You won't read this message. It's red now. Who's winning between Levy Rosman and Eric Rosen today? That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. I am um, slightly, I mean, literally like, you know, um, man, what would it be like? Let me think about that real quick. What would the percentage be? It would be like 51-49. 51-49 and uh, to Levy, you know, because I know Levy a little longer and like, you know, they both strong. I know them both. Like I'm cool with both of them. So I think, you know, it's like 51% Eric, 49%. I mean, 51% Levy, 49% Eric. That's my that's how I look at it for me. <laughs> Eric is a strong player. They both strong, dumb strong players. It's about to be. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm already hyped to see it. I'm already hyped. So make sure you guys are here 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight. There will be the big boy match. I am um, the I am not a GM speed chess championship with Levy Rosman, Gotham Chess versus Eric Rosen, Mr. Stafford himself. Right? Okay. It's gonna be fun. What is he doing? Oh, I guess he just realized that yo, I'm getting crushed. Yo, I'm getting crushed. Just do whatever, cause like. That's what you, some of you guys would do in the chat there, right? Oh, man. I think he would be better prepared. Yeah, it's all about preparation on top of being, on top of preparation. Like, there's a, there's a lot to it, man. Styles of play. What are they going to play? Is it going to, what surprises are going to be there? You know, it's a lot to it, man. A lot to it. I'm excited for it. Clear my schedule for that. So, I'm like, yeah, I'll be watching that. I'll be in the chat with y'all later on. So this is a very nice draw here. Uh, obviously, there's a rook pawn, which is theoretically a draw anyway. Even with the rooks off the board, king, king versus rook pawn is a draw, guys. It's a draw. So pretty easy. He did just go for it here. And even Chris, Chris, you, of course, he just captured it. 
but he didn't have to either. He could literally just step back and no matter what, it's a draw, but taking this is an immediate draw, obviously, just so you know, though. Okay, so let's see. There's like two more games left in round nine. Let's take a look at the standings real quick. Eight and a half out of nine. Yeah, Rook D. Favre is still going ham here. He's still turning up. Uh, is this a win? Ah, it's a win. Wait, 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 wait. Black's going which way? Okay, Black's going this way. You know how many times I have to ask that when I'm playing um, Puzzle Rush? You know, I know I'm know i not the only one. In Puzzle Rush, you get a puzzle and you like, wait a second. Which way are we even going? So, Black is actually going this way here. And um, with that being said, this is a theoretical draw, which they did equal a draw, right? So, think about this. This is a draw. How is this a draw? He's up a bishop. That's what you're asking here. But it's the wrong color bishop. This pawn needs the queen here. And you got the wrong bishop to do so. So, no matter what happens... We're just going to go back and forth. And actually, bishop e5 was just stale. Bishop e5 was stalemate. But um, it didn't matter. It didn't matter anyway because he was in the corner. So great, uh, great, you know, visionary understanding it's going to be a draw no matter what. And now let's take a look at the standings. Okay. 2890, Rick, De Rick Favre has gained a lot of points here. Twenty. I don't know where he started at, but that man about to hit the 2900, you know, 29 thou wow. Okay. He's, uh, he's about to do pretty good. He's doing pretty good there. All right. He's playing Peter now. I mean, let's see how like, he, 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 I think, did he beat Min Lee? I think he did. He beat Min. He beat Min. And now he's playing Peter. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. Because it's about to get real, guys. It's about to get real. Where's Ali Reza? Yeah, I think he had a tough game. Or he had a tough, uh, tough tournament, to say the least. True, a real one. Yeah. OG Marathon. That was an animal match. Yes. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where, which way are we even going, right, Dogger? Which way are we even going? Sometimes that throws you completely off. This is already a wild game. Let's start from the beginning. I just want to see what happened. Oh, Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Yeah, Peter is a is an expert. Not, maybe not an expert. I know he played this all his life. So definitely an expert at this opening. Um, from what I remember, I was studying the Grunfeld a long time ago. Didn't like it because I was like not having good success with it. So I just didn't like it. <laughs> and I was playing Nimzo for a while. Now I'm in King's Indian. But Grun Grunfeld has a lot of theory to it. And uh, it's sharp. It's very sharp stuff. But I know I remember reading a book and Peter was in there. Peter was in that Grunfeld book. A lot of his games were there. Knight f3, knight d7 probably. Yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan of this position for for black. I mean, well, honestly, both sides. I'm just not a Grunfeld player anymore. So maybe moving the rook to c8 or d8. Having the rook, you're going to have just this, this awesome play with your pieces, right? With your pieces. What's the pawn count? Three, six, three, four, five. Yeah, we're usually down a pawn. We're down a pawn, but the, ex the the exception here is the compensation of having both files to work with. Right? We have both files. The rooks can go to both files. Yeah, we're down a pawn, but when we win this pawn back, we have active pieces and counterplay. Very strong bishop bearing down on the king side, uh, able to damage the structure at any moment here. And then that pawn that we're up as white doesn't really matter. And even here, right now, it doesn't matter as much because we're just keeping this on lock, forcing something like rook to c1 or maybe something uh, similar. With that being said, so. Okay. Pretty good. Why would you want to exchange the dark square bishop for the knight here? It, it depends. It, it really depends on the situation. What he did is make a weakness here. And also, yes, like usually this bishop is the strongest piece on the board. Many times it is. And the reason why we can give it up and not be in trouble is because the, the they don't have a dark square bishop. If this bishop happened to be a dark square bishop, this game would take a drastic turn for the worse for black. But because it's a light square bishop, we don't have to worry about the dark square weaknesses that we have after moving removing the bishop. So that is a great question, though, by the way. Are you a Shreshnikov Sicilian player? You know, I loved it for a while. Then I played the Dirty Harry, which is like an accelerated Shreshnikov. Just playing h5 super early um it's uh it, it is something to play um but Shresnikov, i think it's very fun again i'm just not a big fan of the rosalimos i hate i if you play the Shresnikov or anything with knight c6 move two i literally hate and dread playing against the rosalimo it's so hard when you're playing like 2500 players like 2600 players that stuff dumb hard man i've lost like so many games to the same gm all the time same gm bro and i'm like bro i mean i think i beat him like a few times but it sucks to lose to the same thing like it's just so hard to play against that and hence like it was played in the world championship 2018 right and fabiano kept hitting every game draw every game draw 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 
I think the bishop takes c line. No, that's the one I was you have most problems with because it becomes a very close game if you're playing somebody that knows exactly what they're doing. Close the game up. Don't give too much counterplay. It's extremely annoying, bro. It's extremely annoying. You know, so B S B five. Yeah, I know. I know. True. Rossellimo is so annoying. Oh, it is. It is. There's many ways you can play the Rossellimo. You can also play the Rossellimo besides the G6 way that Magnus plays. You can play it in the Queen C7 early. So like Bishop B5, Queen C7. So now you're not doubling your pawns. It's a crazy line. Crazy line, but you do give up the center quite quickly. And you have to rely on quick counterplay. A6, B5, Bishop B7, D6, G6, Bishop G7, 97 castle. That's usually how it goes. But it's annoying. And I'm like, I'm not I'm tired of this. I'm literally tired of it. So I play something else. Get some activity, yeah. That's right. I hated playing against the Rosalimo, but now I play the Nidorf. Yeah, Nidorf's is dumb strong, of course. Nidorf is dumb strong. Is I love the Nidorf myself. Actually, though, I've been looking at the modern defense, which is uh, flexible. I like the flexibility that you have in the uh, in the modern. You can go many ways, and it becomes tactical. And it's uh, I've been looking at a lot of modern theory, to be honest. <laughs> You know, you can go many routes that way. Sometimes I've reached a dragon, a very good dragon. I've also reached a very good King's Indian. And I'm like, yo, this modern is just like, it's flexible. It's very flexible. You can just kind of go with the flow. Whatever they're doing, you can respond to it. It's a very good counter-attacking opening. I think of it as like Muhammad Ali, like rope-a-dope kind of thing. You, I'm on the ropes. You're swinging at me, swinging at me. And then I'm just going to keep hitting you <laughs> when you're trying to swing at me. Have you watched WandaVision? I have not. I have not. I'm usually studying chess. I'm sorry. Like, I don't do anything else. I didn't. I watched a little bit of the Super Bowl. And, like, uh, yeah, that's about it. Like, I'm always studying chess. Because I got goals. Queen C6, very nice. And pushing. Very, very, very good stuff. Okay. Let's change this. There we go. Okay, so what is going on here? There's a check. King F. Whoa. Am I am I dead here? Yeah, that's a wrap. Wow, he goes down. Peter is hitting him. Okay, Pete. Okay, big Pete. Okay, I would stand up and flex real hard if I was Pete right now. At the crib, I would just stand up, flex real hard. Ah, like you just dunked the ball. Let's go, Pete. Big boy Pete. Okay, look at him. Only one. Okay, where's another one? Nine out of ten. But look at Pete, man. Shout out to Pete. High five, bro. High five. Peter Svid. Man, look. Hey, he came to play today. He came to play. Great job, Peter. Great job. Ten out of ten. Or nine out of nine out of ten, right? Nine out of ten, yeah. Nine out of ten. Where is his game at? Is he not playing yet? Kind of weird there. Oh, it's just still. Never mind. There's still games going. That's why. Okay. Cool. Cool. White's just winning. How though? Because this, I'm not able to push. I don't really see it yet. I don't really see it. Hmm. What's the least amount of moves you can win with? Two. Two. Absolutely. It's not fool. Well, maybe it is fool's mate. Yeah, that is fool's mate. Right. F3, G4. I think scholar's mate is the other one. Like queen F, H5, bishop C4 stuff zero by running out of time okay zombie okay zombie with the flex in the chat okay all right all right benjamin bach there uh supposed to be a draw supposed to be supposed to be but we will see we will see. It's supposed to be a draw. Okay, let's change this. Move that over. Greetings from Greece. What's up, Greece? What's going on, man? Yes, check out the Twitch channel. There's the info. Thank you so much, uh, Gaming David. Yeah, right here, bro. Just check out the About page. And you can click the About tab, and then um, everything's there. I have all the stuff that you, you need there. This should be a draw. Should be, but we will see. We will see. I don't see any way you could really blunder hard here. Like there's, there's like no hard blunder you can make. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's real hard blunders. Maybe you could hang a bishop somehow and that would lose. But, you know, there's really like no hard blunders you can make. So let's see what happens. See what happens there. 
Greece in the chat. What's up, Greece? What's going on? Yeah, it's just a shuffle party here. It's, it's just a shuffle party. Very simple. Shuffle and shuffle and shuffle until there's 50 moves. You can't even make a pawn move. You can't even make a pawn move. So, I mean, they just bought to switch this boy back and forth. This is going to be a 50 piece, which is a 50 move roll. Guys, this is uh, this is hurting your chest. Okay, I'm just telling you right now. This is this is hurting your chest. Now, also, it's not hurting your chest, but it is like because in a way, it's hurting your chest because nothing's going on. There's just they're just moving, literally just moving. But how is it helping? Because they're playing on. They're just like just play on. You know, play it through. There's some people that literally never resign, literally never resign, and that's okay to play that and have that style of chess. Play on until the end, no matter what, because that's going to convert in other times when you may be actually losing and you win a game. But because you've been already practicing, never resign, you're going to actually do much better in those situations. So why are we not playing King D4 and E5? Why are we not playing King D4? Why are we not playing King D4 and E5 here? Oh, my goodness. Especially at this. Look at this. Look, right. They, they're not even doing anything. King D4 and E5 was great. It, it had it. Definitely had that. One second increment means they get one second added. The time it took. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah. That's right. What do you, what, what happened? What happened? Why, why did she go into a think there? Or he, Vlad over here. Where's he from? Serbia. I mean, really, you know, I don't get it. Just put the king here. What are you doing? Put the king here and then push and then walk the king over and take this one. Come on. You should know better than this. Come on now. Even pushing beforehand. Come in here, snatch that one, snatch that one. Wow. Wow. We're going to just sit here and wait, see what happens then, bro. Wow. That doesn't work. It jumped. Okay, is it one of those? Yeah, that, that works. That works. Put the bishop here. And then I think you can play C5 or E5. It's one or the other. You got to play E5, then C5. Oh, that's sweet. E5, there it is. And then C5. Ooh. Tactics win games. Get them off the board. Get them off the board. Put, Just take it. It doesn't matter. D6, that works too. That works. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Made the pawn break there. Wow. That was absolutely beautiful. That was sweet right there, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, you in games. Queen there. GG. Mate in two. Do what it do. Have a good one. Wow, GG. Very good. Very good. Yeah, that bishop g4, I guess, you know, this is what happens when you try to play on and you don't want to draw. You know? You don't want to draw, you know. Why say why are Russian players so strong? Because they born 2100, bro. Like they literally born 2100. They come out 2100 every single time, my guy. And they also start with the in-game as well. And they got their own chess over there, Soviet chess school. You know, we had to make the U.S. chess school. They always had the Soviet chess school over there, right? It's just a different breed. It's a different breed, my guy. It's a different breed. Yeah, so 11, 11 though, 11, uh, 11th round. This is the last round. Peter Svid, Peter Svidler in first place, below in second. So nine is the top dog. Nine is it. Nine is everything. Nine is like taking the thing. So 10 is, oh, 10 will, will have first place. No matter what, 10 will have first place. So let's see if that's going to be. A possibility for the big boys playing in this final round here nine and nine here we go let's see what happens so we have a neo Grun grunfeld again you know guys why is it tuesday tilted <laughs> oh man fosk is the answer to everything funny he didn't want to lose points to a draw so he lost yeah that's tough in your opinion what's the begin be best beginner chess book to read um beginner chess book that's a great question i mean honestly i think reassess your chess you need at every single level whether it's your first day of chess or you know your gm like it's reassess your chess is actually a very 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 good book it's excellent it just breaks down what pieces really are supposed to be doing and then there's a chapter in there pushing your own agenda stuff like that like it's really an excellent book to be honest so read that it's a great starting point it's a great book to have no matter what. And it's just going to help your understanding of chess. And that's what it's about. Chess is about the understanding part. It is memorization too. But definitely, you do need the, um, you do need the understanding.
Books are irrelevant now. I'm putting in interactive online help and videos, in my opinion. Yeah, of course, everybody learns differently, right? Some people can do video. Some people do audio. Like, just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to listen to him. And I can see it in my head, right? Imagine that, you know? Imagine that. Imagine reading a book without a board. Like, that's how I try to read my books now. If I'm reading a chess book, I most likely am trying to read it without a board. Because that not only does it work on your board vision, but now it's it's working on, you know, your calculating skills when you get to over the board chess and stuff like that. That's extremely hard. But everybody learns a little bit different. In Russia, chess was might still be a mandatory subject in school early on. That's a great one. Born 2100, good name for the Netflix show about chess. Yeah, funny. Who's your favorite, Canty? Levy or Eric? I mean, evenly. I gave it 51% Levy, 49% Eric. It's that close because, like, they both my homies. And they, they dumb strong. Both of them are. Hey, A to Z Grandmaster Techniques. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one, too. Beth Harmon moment. Duke Duke. Yes, sir. Duke Duke. So, all right, let's say, pay attention to this position here. It's a completely equal according to the evaluation bar, but not even looking at the evaluation bar. Let's look at the pieces here. So what's the piece count? Three, uh, six for white, six pawns for white, and a seventh pawn for black. Three, am I counting that wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, I am. So I forgot about the double one. Three, yeah, four, five, six, seven. So we, we have the same amount of pawns ex uh, excluding the pawn structure difference here that's pretty bad for for white actually i think peter is definitely pushing for more oh but then he just doubled his pawns what bro what was that that felt like that was straight garbo i mean that was like straight garbo Wait, we gave up the pawn we can't even take this rook b8 and we not great like bishop c6 hitting the knight so like he he messed that up my guy rook a7 okay i get it but you might be in trouble you might not be able to take this he does it anyway this is risky, and I say risky because knight f3 looks scary, but he has bishop takes b bishop takes b2, luckily. Does that work? Oh, he has knight b8. Jeez, tactics are everywhere. Oh my goodness, tactics win games. Tactics win games. So the line was knight f3, bishop takes b2. If rook to b1, you had knight to b8, and then hitting this. And then if bishop takes b5, you had a3. It was like wild, very wild there. That was a wild line, but the Grunfeld does have those kind of positions there. Yeah, that's crazy. Levy's a big favorite. So what I say, Levy, rest in BC4. Yeah. How long have you played chess? 21 years this year. Actually, 21 years. Um, 29 this year. 29 this year. Carl James, yeah. Funny, funny, funny. Again, I do like Black's position. I really appreciate your insight and thorough commentary on these games, man. Much appreciated. Hey, man, I appreciate the love, man, and the great energy from you. Enjoy the company. Good to see you. Sorry. Just to check, he recommended how to reassess your chest. Yes, make sure it's the fourth edition, the new one. That's the newest one, fourth edition. You can order it on Amazon. You know, you can also go to my uh, my, my profile there in the chat and then look at the, uh, I have a books recommendations list of books, literally, that I went through myself. Go through it. 21 years is a long time control. Don't flag. Shout out to Corblah in the chat. Jonathan Corblah. Corblah. Been on more game shows than anybody I've ever known. So, uh, Rook takes B2, Rook takes, and Bishop takes. Yeah, I'm loving Black's position because of that counterplay and that activity. Very, very nice stuff. Very, very nice stuff. You know, you know. <laughs> drip, drip. What's your favorite non-chess book? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Probably Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich is a nice one. Uh, remember to follow us, Kate Switch. Not a sponsor. It's actually what Thanks, bro. Thank you. A3, defending the pawn. Pawn takes, rook b1. Yeah, this is a nice play. This is a nice play here. Uh, rook a4, I do like that. That's strong. Jeez. Wait, is that losing? You jumped off the deep end. Get the man off the board. That's not a move. That's not a move, bro. What are you doing with your life here? No, that is not right. Oh, man, that was a strong move. Rook a4, shut the door and score. My guy, that was beautiful. Rook a4 was great. Because if a bishop d5, we had e6 in that situation. And then taking, and then we take on a2, defending the b2 pawn. Because he went b3 after we snap, you snap again, we go rook a1, and that's a, that's a gg. Have a nice day. Rook takes f4, it's beautiful. King f8, probably, eh, you didn't have to go king f8. It would have been sort of a perpetual position, as we're going to repeat moves there, and then you would play rook a4 anyway. Rook takes a2, it looks like Peter going to run away with this one. Look at big Pete. I see you, Big Pete. Okay, Big Peter came to play today. Look at him, and he closes that out. Wow. Who expected Peter Spittler to win this tournament? Like, 10 out of 11 today. The man went crazy. He went off today. Shout out to him. 
and entertainment. Thanks for all. Appreciate it. Oh, man. Wow. Big shout outs to Peter Svidler as he takes today. Now, of course, where is he from? Russia. You know, they born 2100 over there. And the man went off. Of course, he just represented for the country today. Yeah, he represented for everybody today in Russia. You know, Russia on my back. I carry the whole country on my back, says Peter Svidler. Very strong chest there, man. That was great. Now, we still got more chests left, though. Let's see who, how the rest of the um, the games are going. 12 team. Uh, dang, 12 team be crushed. Oh, wait, wait. He's getting crushed. Never mind. I thought he was playing white. Bogdan's a monster. Ooh, look at that nice little discovery check. Take my queen if you want to. And then queen. But he could have played it anyway, and he could have went back to rook c8. And it would have been nah, still losing, you know, but different ways of playing it. So 12 team goes down in that one. Bogdan takes that one. Uh, let's see any notable names here. Let's check out E. Hansen. Okay. E. Hansen, what you got here, Eric? Let's show us something here, man. We've been trying to watch Eric the entire time. How do I view the book recommendations? You have to go to my channel, Zacher. You have to go to my channel. And then you can look under the About tab. So you can see uh, there's usually a list there of books for Mother Russia. Yeah, funny. Mother Russia. Eric playing bad today. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Eric had a bad. I mean, not, not too bad, though. I mean, he got... What, seven? He got eight now? Did he win this? Oh, he lost this one too. Dang, yeah, he had a tough one today. He had a tough one. This in the chat right there, Fall Off God. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see who's left. Who's left? Renato. Oh, well, we'll, we'll check this one out. Alexander Zubov. Looks like a... Wait, wh which way are they going? You always got to look at that. Just like in the puzzles, Puzzle Rush, and you'd be like, I don't know which way we even going. Uh, ooh, ooh, I was about to say he going to catch him. Well, he could take it though in Queen. We both queen it. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is a draw. We both queen it. There it is. There it is, boys. Very, very easy draw there. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Do you stream a lot yourself? Really liking your vibe? I do, Falcon. I will be streaming tonight. I will be streaming tonight. Um, probably either before or after the levy turn. Um, before or after the I Am Not a GM match because uh, I, I'm watching that in the whole time. So I'm definitely going to be streaming tonight, though. Very entertainment commentary. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. You can follow right there in the chat, right there in the chat. Wait, Carl will participate. Svidler. Yes, Svidler won that. Boy, Svidler just came to play today. This one actually is supposed to be a draw, but this one's harder, to be honest. What time is 2010 p.m.? Um, PM? It depends on, on, you know, where. But it is 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight. I am at East Coast Eastern time. So hype for Friday. Let's go, Chaz, Nathan, Chaz. Very instructive. Oh, you got to move. Just make a move. Oh, and he lost. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He lost. Oh, man. Right? It's so easy to make blunders when you were the person with the bishop, to be honest. Not easy. Not easy. Wow. How do you deal with mental fatigue? I've been playing chess for a month. and Mental fatigue? You have to uh, rest, man. Literally take a day off or take two days off. You know, take a few days off. Do something else. Because uh, it's, it's, it's like a muscle. Like your brain is, your mind is a muscle in a way. You have to uh, rest it. Or you're going to have chest overload, overwork yourself. Black's just completely winning in this position. This will be the last game. Oh, Roberto played in the um, I Am Not a GM match, actually. I think, did he did he advance? I think he did advance. I think he advanced. I think he advanced here. But we're going to see, we're going to check out. Uh, take a nap, take a walk. Correct, correct, correct. Just playing or kind of active studying? Uh, literally both, Albrook Twitch, literally both. What happened to Fyro? Well, obviously, he just did not have a good tournament. I don't even know where he is in the list, guys. Let's see if we can find him. Maybe he dropped out. Usually, that's what happens. Like, you're not having a good tournament. You just dip out. You know, you lose two games. You know, you don't need to be in there no more. Um, wasting rating in a way. Yeah, he. I don't even see him down here. He must have dropped out. He must have dropped out, guys. Ferruja, I think, just dropped up out of there. <laughs> Even I know what's going on. Yeah, that's our job, man, to help you out. What is going on? What, slow it down. Slow it down. Wow. What are you, why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I hope you stalemate. This is, this is what we want. Now we hope he stalemates here. What, what are you doing right now? What are you doing? Kids, don't try this at home, okay? Don't try this at home, please. Thank you very much. There's a mate, okay? Because you're going to end up stalemating. <laughs> and you're not going to be happy. 
I've seen you getting map points just both for a while. You prefer forward variations or overstudy? Um, overstudy. Trolling is the best. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the final standings here. Shout out to Peter. The Russian boys. The Russian boys. Peter's Fiddler took it home for the country. Great job there. And then Becca95 and Liam. Literally people we did not expect to win this at all, actually. Now, Peter's Fiddler is a great candidate to win it. But we did not expect him to win it here. And shout out to Peter's Fiddler for winning that one, guys. So this was another Title Tuesday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this we, we have it every single Tuesday. So make sure you guys don't go anywhere. Um, we are going to raid someone, so we're about to go raid um, Anna Cramling. So make sure you guys stick around. Stick around for the raid. You can check my channel in the chat. I should be streaming later on. So my channel is in the chat right now. So I'll see you guys um, on the next one. Make sure you don't go anywhere. And next week is another Title Tuesday, and we'll see you guys soon. I'm National Master James Canty the Third with Chess.com. I'll see you on the next one.